So I'll email all the guys and see if any of them can do it. Okay. If anything, I'm sure I can get Jonathan. What? Yeah. Yeah, do you want to text uh, him and ask him? Yeah. I don't know how much he likes me, so. Why, why would he like you? Well, if he's like everybody else. Because um, there was a game that supposedly he and Kevin agreed that he could do, but it was never on that calendar. And then when I took over the calendar, it was already filled. So, so it's Kevin's fault. When, when it's 6.45, huh? you just start, right? Same. You just start, right? It's 6.45? Yeah. Usually better than this, but the weather's so bad. I was surprised. When did it stop snowing? Some of the roads are still like not. My car is pretty bad with the tires, but it's not great. Last year, through the playoffs, we drew really well. The year before, well. Hey. John, good to see you, John. Make our summer. Make our summer. Oh, man. Have you Oh, yes. She brings the beauty to the equation. There's no question about that one. You're going to get Michigan State this time? The Lemoyne Dolphins take on the Merrimack Warriors in the Northeast 10 tournament.
semifinals. Good evening, everybody. Along with my partner, Don Famolo, this is Chris Guarnozio. Courtside with the Dolphins, brought to you by Pepsi. Delicious, refreshing Pepsi. As uh, LeMoyne gets set to uh, continue their defense, Don, of their not only any 10 crown, but their regional crown. Trying to get back to that Elite Eight. And uh, they're a few more steps away from doing it, but they started their playoff run this year with a win against Pace on Sunday, 86-66. to And it was LeMoyne's best shooting performance of the season at 57%. And they, they made 14 out of 26 from three. They keep that up, especially against Merrimack Zone, Don. Uh, the sky's the limit for this LeMoyne team. Uh, they, they must have struggled a little bit. They didn't shoot quite as well as Virginia did the other night in the Dome. But... Uh, when LeMoyne shoots that well, um, it's very difficult to beat them because they play tough defensively the whole game. They really clamp down in the second half. They make great adjustments at halftime. If they're making shots and defending well, it's very difficult for teams to come back against them. They build a lead. You just can't stop them enough. You can't get enough stops against them on their offense to go, go on a run, and it's hard to go on a run out of your own because LeMoyne's defense has played so well. It's true. Lemoyne um, in scoring defense is ranked 17th in the nation. And uh, Merrimack's not that far behind as they are third in the conference, uh, giving up just a little more than a point a game more than Lemoyne is. So two stingy defenses who play completely different styles. Merrimack, for those who don't know, plays strictly a 2-3 zone. Um, and they are relentless in it. They're very, very tough, especially this year. Uh, they don't allow a lot of three-pointers. They don't allow a lot of penetration. And for LeMoyne, they play strict man-to-man -man defense, although we've been seeing some zone in recent games for, yep. for a, a brief moments, uh, two or three possessions in each half for Patrick Beeline's club, and uh, it's been very effective when he's thrown that out there. Yeah, and I think part of the reason it's effective is he doesn't do it all the time. You can't really prepare for it. For Merrimack, you mentioned they play that zone all the time. They try to take away penetration and the three-point shooting, and those are the two ways to beat the zone. Those are LeMoyne's best two offensive um, options, shooting from the outside and driving to the basket. They are not a big team. They're not a post-up team. They don't play with their backs to the basket. Typically, it's the small forwards and guards that are driving to the basket, kicking back out to try to make things happen. So LeMoyne's offense um, does not play well into the defense of Merrimack. On the other hand, Merrimack's going to face a very stingy man-to-man -man defense by the Dolphins. Yeah, LeMoyne has wrote, written that uh, stingy defense uh, to a real hot streak. They've won 10 out of their last 11 games, won the uh, Southwest Division, coming out of really nowhere to come on like gangbusters and win it by one game, beating New Haven by one point on the last day of the regular season to accomplish that feat for the third straight year. They are 18-8 and eight overall. 14-6 and six was their NE10 record, and they're 9-2 on their home floor. Merrimack has also had a very fine year, pretty much consistently from the start of the season on. 20-9 and nine is their record. They finished 14-7 and seven in league play, second place in the Northeast Division, and of course the, league, the teams cross over in tournament play in the NE10. Merrimack is 8-5 and five on the road, and they come off an 83-81 squeaker against the Delphi on Sunday. They had to come from behind. They were down as many as 15 points in the second half and uh, did just barely get past Adelphi. The main reason why, one of the top guards in not only Division II, but in the country, just flat out, Javaris Hayes, with a near any 10 tournament record, 46 points, falling one point shy of Drew Adderley's record for Assumption back in the early 90s. And they needed that to win that game. So the question is, who's going to guard him? Who, who well, guard? last year was Russell Sangster for LeMoyne. Unfortunately, the LeMoyne's uh, uh, the defensive player of the year multiple times. LeMoyne's best defender maybe that we've ever seen, at least from the guard position, is not here. So what do the Dolphins do? In and when some we say game, not here, we should say graduated. Well, not here on the court. Yeah. Right, He's right. actually here behind us, typically uh, running the, uh, the show for video. But um, in some games this year, the Dolphins have put their bigger player, Kobe Nwandu, on the star score for the other team. And Kobe at 6'6 is long. He can make it difficult for smaller players both to shoot from the outside and drive to the basket. So we'll have to see if um, if that's one of the options. If not, LeMoyne's smaller guards are going to have to find a way to guard Hayes. And LeMoyne's a little smaller in the backcourt than they were last year. They're quick, they're talented, not quite as big. With the exception of O'Shea Gary, I think it's six foot three, and as a healthy O'Shea Gary, his defense has really stepped up 
we've talked about his offense, his ability to cut and drive to the basket, he uh, his assists, his lack of turnovers. He does not turn the ball over, but his defense has also been pretty good this year. He's going to also have to put a body on Javaris Hayes. Yeah, and it's uh, 6'3", he will loom over Javaris by three inches, but Javaris, such a quick player, and the quickness extends to the defensive end where he is the best steals man in all of Division Two. He's got 119 steals this year, six shy of the record that he set for himself and for the conference um, his uh, freshman year. So he's number one in the nation in steals. He had seven against LeMoyne, I believe, in the first meeting in the regular season back in uh, January, which uh, Merrimack won 76-62 in North Andover, Mass. But uh, he's, he's a guy that you have to keep your eye on uh, offensively, and you got to watch your passes because he's sneaky quick in the lane. He, he will, uh, the passing lanes, he will play possum and then knock out, uh, knock a pass away or intercept one and take it the other way. And, and that will give you an idea of how aggressive that zone is. They don't just sit there in a 2-3 and sit back and wait for you to shoot. They are aggressive. They're, they're not like SU zone. They don't take the wings out up high to take shots away. They're a little tougher to get to down low, but Dolphins don't have a lot of size anyway. Again, they don't post up. So it's going to be very interesting to see in the first half, I think, how LeMoyne responds offensively, how they can get the looks that they're used to getting against man defense. Second half, who knows? Both teams are going to make adjustments. These are two great coaches, very talented teams. I think they're very even on the court. Their records are very similar. Um, this should be a close game, and it should go down to the wire. And we'll speak now with one of the assistant coaches who had the scouting report on Merrimack in the regular season and now here in the postseason. That's Dan Kegler. And uh, Coach, uh, this Merrimack team, you start with the 2-3 zone and Javaris Hayes and everything else kind of falls in behind those two uh, highlights. Right, right. They're 2-3 zone. Um, they're staying at all game. Um, we just have to attack it, you know. Uh, we're attacking from the baseline, I think, is the best uh, way of doing it. Um, but we have to move the ball, and we're going to have to knock down some shots to loosen it up on the inside. And then uh, as far as Javaris Hayes, uh, he's a really good player, uh, really good at making plays for himself and for the rest of their team. So we really got to keep him out the lane, keep him in front, and shut out their shooters. For Javaris Hayes on defense, he... Um he forced uh, five or six steals against LeMoyne uh, in the game at Merrimack, and that was the game that LeMoyne suffered its most turnovers this season. LeMoyne is number one in the conference and fewest turnovers committed, but that game, a little bit of sloppiness, especially in the passing lane, and Javaris made him pay. Right. It was uh, it was really uncharacteristic of us. Uh, he actually had seven steals seven in that steals, game. Seven steals, yeah. Um, uh, so we're, we're aware of that, and we have to take care of the ball if we're going to win. Um, we were trying to make some passes into the high post where there wasn't an angle for that, so we, we addressed that and uh, cleaned that up going into this game. I have another question, and that is, this is the third straight year that LeMoyne has faced Merrimack in the postseason, all here in this building. You were on the court for the first two, now you're in an assistant coach. Does that experience, having played against many of these uh, Merrimack players the last two years, help you in your scout and also help um, the, you to talk to the team about what they do? Yeah, I think it does, um, particularly losing to them um, two, a couple of years ago uh, when we did in, in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Uh, just so we know exactly what's going to happen, what, what to expect from them, uh, how they play. Um, not every team is the same go from the regular season to the postseason, and we know that changed from Merrimack from the regular season to the postseason, and uh, we're ready and prepared for that. And Lemoyne's a different team now than, than they were back at that time during the season as well. What else has changed for the Dolphins that have helped them go on this long winning streak after struggling against Merrimack and Bentley? Um, we're just clicking. We knew it was going to be a process. Uh, we knew it would take some time to get these guys to mesh together, um, to, to run our system, to, to get everybody to buy in. And now we're starting to turn the corner at the right times, and this is what we coach them for, not to win and not to be great in September and, and October and November, December, but to be great right now in March is when you really need to be t uh, at your best. Well, good luck today, Coach. Should be a good one today. Thank you. Thanks, That's Danny. LeMoyne and Merrimack as uh, Dan Kegler uh, gives us his scouting report on the opponent for today's game. The Merrimack Warriors out of North Andover, Massachusetts, a Catholic school just like LeMoyne College. Of course, this being Ash Wednesday, it is, uh, it is worth noting that. Famous alum for uh, Merrimack College. How about Carl Yastrzemski, Hall of Fame uh, Boston Red Sox player? 
And this, of course, is the last year for Merrimack at the Division II level. They will be joining the Northeast Conference of Division I next year. So um, they, they, just like Lemoyne, are a lock for the NCAA tournament coming up uh, a week from this Saturday. But right now, they want to still, both these teams want to get a piece of hardware, um, namely the NE10 tournament yeah. trophy. So we are going to have a national anthem, which is rare before a men's game, because we usually have doubleheaders here, including the last uh, playoff doubleheader on uh, Sunday. So we'll step aside for the national anthem, and then we'll be back with starting lineups as Lemoyne and the Merrimack Warriors play for the second time this year, first in the postseason. Here are the starting lineups for tonight's playoff game. It will be for the Merrimack Warriors. Javaris Hayes, the aforementioned guard, six foot junior out of Patterson, New Jersey, leads the club in just about every category. 19 and a half points, six and a half rebounds, six and a half assists, and 119 total steals. Khalif Crawford will be by his side, a six one sophomore out of Linden, New Jersey, averaging just over eight points a game. Jaleel Lord, a six four junior wing out of Jersey City, New Jersey, averaging just over 11 points a game. Ryan Bolter, the 6'7 senior who killed Lemoyne at Merrimack back on uh, January 19th when these two teams met. He had 24 points and six threes. He's out of Mansfield, Massachusetts, 14 point per game score, and he leads the uh, Northeast Tech Conference with 91 three pointers made. And Idris Joyner is back in the starting lineup at center after uh, being off the, on the bench the last game, uh, coming back from a groin injury. 6'5 junior out of Plainfield, New Jersey, averaging 9.5 points, 6.5 rebounds per game. Merrimack is coached by Joey Gallo in his third year with a 59 and 33 record. He and Patrick Beeline, the Lemoyne head coach, had coach are extremely close friends best man at best men at each other's weddings and um, Merrimack at 20 and 9 uh, looking to put a damper on Lemoyne's chance at repeating as any 10 tournament champions now tonight's Lemoyne starting lineup which is presented by well now urgent care conveniently located in your community to provide quick convenient care with exceptional service. At one guard will be O'Shea Gary, the 6'3 redshirt junior out of Toronto, Canada. He's at the point, averaging 3.5 points and a team best 3.2 assists per game. Ryan Rowland, who's really emerged as a shooter for Lemoyne, 5'10 junior transfer out of Mercyhurst. He's out of Syracuse, a local kid and a West Hill High School grad. 9.5 point per game scorer, but he's up to second in the conference now in three-point accuracy. Kobe Nwamdu is a 6'6 junior out of York, Pennsylvania, leading scorer on the team at 17 points a game. Tom Brown, a 6'4 junior lefty out of Ellicott City, Maryland, averaging just under 11 points a game, the only returning starter from last year's Elite Eight Club. He leads the team and is second in the conference in rebounding at 8.5 per game. And Nezdek Gurkhan, a 6'6 grad student in the middle, he's out of Ankara, Turkey, and a transfer out of St. Leo, averaging just under three points and just under three rounds rebounds per game. Lemoyne leads the all-time season series. This might be the last time they ever meet on the basketball court. 18-17 is the slim lead for Lemoyne here on this floor. The Dolphins have a 12-6 record lifetime against Merrimack, including last year's win in the NE10 tournament, uh, which the Dolphins won quite handily, 84-55. Last meeting, as we said, on January 19th in North Andover, Massachusetts, when Merrimack won that game 76-62. It was a roller coaster second half. The Dolphins trailed at the break, then went on a big run to go up five, and then uh, gave up a big run to go down by double digits, and they uh, wound up losing. Dolphins in the home white uniforms, trimmed in green and gold. Green letters spelling Lemoyne across the chest. Merrimack in the road navy, 
trimmed in gold. Gold letters and numbers, Merrimack across the front of the jersey. Our officials for tonight's game are Jason Bradwell, Brian Zink, and Brian Dumont. Well, it looks like already early, Chris. Kobe Nwandu right next to Javaris Hayes. Interesting. And Merrimack wins the tap and will move from left to right on your screen. Javaris Hayes wearing the shiny, bright yellow sneakers. Gets now O'Shea Gary picks him up, man to man. Top of the key, Bolter for three, rims out. That's a good sign for Lemoyne because he nailed his first three in the opening minutes against Lemoyne in the first meeting. Didn't look ready for that shot. He was kind of falling backwards. Didn't he can make that, underneath. though. True, but as you mentioned, a good sign that he didn't make that one. Brown at the heart of the zone offense to the corner, rolling for three. That's no good. Rebound taken by Lord. And both teams empty in their first trips from downtown. Here's Hayes hopping through the lane and lays it up and in to break the seal. Coming off the career-high 46-point performance, he also had in that game nine rebounds, four assists, and five steals. Just stuffs the stat sheet every single day. O'Shea Gary now with it to the right side and Tom Brown. We talk about how quick he is, but unless you see him on the court, you don't realize it. Short corner pass to Kobe Nwando, a step back baseline jumper, rims off, bolter the rebound. Not sure why he stepped back instead of going strong to the glass. Javaris Hayes drives, passes down low to Joyner, back out, left corner three is good by Crawford. Any offense you get out of him is a bonus. He averages just over eight points a game and hasn't been scoring a lot lately. Dolphins inbound the ball now, trailing 5-0. But on that possession, they made sure they shut down Hayes. Took two passes to get to the open man, but you know, LeMoyne wants to shut down Javaris as best they can, but they have to make sure that his supporting cast does not step up and take easy threes like that. Well, they'll that be one. happy if, um, in general, Crawford <laughs> takes three-pointers. He's 29% on the season from beyond the arc. Roland shut off nicely by, uh, by Roland. O'Shea Gary has to scoop one up, misses. The rebound tapped up to Bolter, and the Dolphins come up empty, though they got a decent shot off with the shot clock expiring. Here's Javaris Hayes missing the running bank shot short, rebounded by Gurkhan. Here's Roland on the left side. Good defense by Roland on Hayes, but still Hayes got close to the basket. Dolphins, who shot a season-high 57% in the win against Pace in the first round. Near steal on the wing by Lord, but it's tapped into the backcourt, and Roland will have a second possession. Shot clock to single digits. Roland loses the ball, gets it back, spins out of a double team, throws it and throws it away to Crawford. Good defense by Merrimack. Here's Javaris Hayes. Thought about going one-on-one. -on -one. Here's a deep three by Lord. That's good, and it's 8 nothing in favor of Merrimack. Jaleel Lord, a very good three-point shooter. Eighth in the conference and threes made. The difference so far has been Merrimack's defense. Lemoyne's only had a couple of decent looks. Texas. Yep, their defense has been a lot stingier this year. Texas. Go. Interesting that Pat Beeline has not called a timeout yet, as things are not going well, about as poorly as they could go right now for Lemoyne, but it's early. Here's a rolling three left side. It's no good. Rebound, though, to Brown. He can't control, and Javaris Hayes takes it on the near sideline. Long pass down low to Crawford. He comes down, gets the ball knocked free, and it'll be Ryan Roland wrapping him up and getting the loose ball, and the arrow favors Lemoyne. Good, great play by Roland. Played that like a defensive back. When the ball came down, both players caught it. Jump ball to Lemoyne. I think Lemoyne, like on the previous possession, did everything right, just missed a shot. We're just over three minutes in. Lemoyne's still a goose egg on the scoreboard, trailing eight to nothing. O'Shea Gary. Falls backwards, gets it off to Kobe Nuando. He drives inside. Double team comes. Good ball movement by Lemoyne. Here's O'Shea Gary. Bounces to a cutting Tom Brown. Extra passes. Here's Ryan Rowland with an angle jumper. No good. Rebound. Idris Joyner takes it away from Tom Brown. Rowland now 0 of 3 from the floor. Lemoyne got a good look there, but unlike their previous playoff game, the Dolphins do not look comfortable offensively. Even the shots that are open, they look like they're under some stress. Lord wanted a three there, but uh, Nwandu closed ground on him. Now an entry pass to Joyner, left blocks, backing in on Gurkhan, turn around, the shot might have been deflected by Gurkhan, and it's saved on the baseline by Tom Brown. The number two rebounder in the conference. Entry pass into the heart of the zone to Gurkhan, out to the right corner, a three by uh, Nwandu is good, and Lemoyne's on the scoreboard. Remember, Don, Lemoyne's last game, the first four baskets they had were three-pointers by four different players for a 12-7 lead against Pace. Here's Javaris Hayes on the left side, bottled up, 
Back out, top of the key. Khalif Crawford drives, spins, foul line. Back out to Javaris Hayes, who doesn't take many threes, but he'll launch one here and knocks it down. Three, Javaris Hayes went one of two in his 46-point performance. He was 19 of 30 from the floor in that one, as officials time as the ball was loose. Substitutions now for the Warriors. They'll bring in Troy McLaughlin, the 6'2 junior, whose cousin was here for pace, Luke McLaughlin, three days ago. He's out of Old Tapan, New Jersey. Also, Mikey Watkins, their top bench threat, 5'11 freshman out of Roselle, New Jersey. 11 players on this Merrimack team are from either New Jersey or Massachusetts. Six from the Garden State, where head coach Joey Gallo is from. Nwandu's got it on the right wing, ball fake. Now it's Kobe Nwandu. Dolphins down eight. Here's Roland into the paint. Gets it back out to Nwandu. He'll fire up a three. That's no good, but Roland snatches the rebound. Merrimack not a good rebounding team. In fact, they're one of the worst in the country. Right side three-pointer by Gurkhan is long. Rebound. Kobe Nwandu fights for it, and it's out of bounds off of... Lemoyne, they say. Jason Bradwell with the call, not a popular one. We have our first media timeout. So far, Merrimack off to the 11-3 lead on the Dolphins. The winner to advance to the championship game in on Saturday afternoon. We'll take a timeout. You're watching Lemoyne College basketball and any 10 tournament action on any 10 now. Following each win. Be sure to follow the Fins on social media for your chance to win with the Fins all season long and develop. At Lemoyne, we believe that nourishing one's soul is as important as enriching one's mind. That integrity makes a person stronger and the world better. That passion and compassion feed off of one another. We strive for greatness, but always to the eyes of goodness. These are the values we live by. Fins for life. Northwestern Mutual is a proud corporate partner of Lemoyne College Athletics. Northwestern Mutual is focused on your goals, and you can learn more about growing career opportunities with them as well. You and Northwestern Mutual, stronger together. Learn more at SyracuseNM.com. Early on in New Haven, Connecticut, Southern Connecticut, New Haven, tied it two. That's very early, and it's actually West Haven. That's right, it is. That's right, because the, ga the game's in New Haven, not at Southern Connecticut. Very confusing. And they are, you know, approximately a minute and a half in in that game. Kendra Sheehan was listening in on the Lemoyne timeout. What did Patrick Beeline have to say to his troops? Patrick Beeline said they're doing a lot of jump shooting behind the arc right now. They need to work on burning the defense, getting into the paint, driving. And they have, they have to move the ball back and forth more on the court. Defensively, they're... They need to be more active on the ball and get up on those players. Thank you, Kendra. Malik Garner in the game now, trying to get up on the ball on Javaris Hayes. Tough task for him. Yeah, Malik Garner has been really coming on lately on the offensive end. Skip pass into the corner. Quick three by Bolter. Front rimmed it. He's 0 for 2. Rebounded by Tom Brown with two hands. T.J. Sunshine Bird in the game as well, defending that shot. Yep, he's LeMoyne's top bench threat offensively. 6'3", senior out of Greenwich, Connecticut. 13 straight games in double figures as a reserve. Malik Garner pounding the dribble between his legs. Now to the right side of Kobe Nwandu. Entry pass to Asuncion Bird. Spins down low. The little flip. It bounces in for him. Got the home shooter's touch that time, and the Dolphins are back within six. Interesting putting CJ at the top of the key area against the 2 3 zone. He's so quick on that move, and he finishes so well. He's probably the best finisher on the team. And now he's guarding Bolter and giving up four inches. Javaris Hayes, top of the key. Burst of speed to the right blocks. Gives up the dribble. Oh, a wobbly pass almost picked off. Instead, Mikey Watkins, a very talented freshman, works on the left side. Well defended by Asuncion Burr. Here's a three-pointer by Idris Joyner, and he hits it, falling down. Joyner becomes the fourth different warrior to hit a three-pointer in this first few moments. And he's a very good foul or three-point shooter, close to 40%. Doesn't take many as the starting five, but Lemoyne's now down a game-high nine, 14 to five. Bounce entry to Tom Brown in the short corner. T tries to spin on Joyner. The flip is good with the left hand. And there are the Dolphins going inside. Yep, like right you on cue. That, um, that's, uh, you know, you can loosen up a zone two ways. You can drive, cause the zone to collapse and give you better looks from the outside, or you can hit from the outside. A double screen for uh, Javaris Hayes and another missed three by 
This one by McLaughlin in the corner. LeMoyne gets the rebound. Here's Ryan Rowland. Pounds the dribble. Right side pass. Gets the return. Now back to Garner. Here's Rowland. Left side to Asuncion Bird. Garner flips it into the corner. Kobe Nwandu thought about the three. Instead, he throws a skip pass to the left corner. And Rowland. And he throws it away. Good defense by Merrimack forcing the action. And now another substitution. Lord comes back in for Merrimack. And in for the first time is uh, Justin Connolly, who started the last game, a 6'7 freshman and a shot blocker. Third in the league in block shots as a rookie out of Melrose, Mass. Tom Brown's probably saying, what do I have to do every time I um, play the five position? I'm playing somebody who's a shot blocker. Watkins throws it to the right corner. And stepping on the end line or the sideline is Jaleel Lord. Lemoyne gets it back on the unforced error. It's been tough for LeMoyne to get the ball to Tom Brown. He did have that little flip shot just recently, but he's struggling to get free down low and against the zone. LeMoyne has shot very well, over 50% for their last six games, but so far not shooting well in the early going against the Warriors. Trailing 14-7. Roland to Garner, but pump fake. Now a no-look pass into Asuncion Bird. Here's Tom Brown driving, passes in the paint, and throws it away. Jaleel Lord. Throws it up ahead to Watkins, who has to corral it in the corner, and then lost it. It's stolen by Garner. Great defense by Garner to take away the fast break and stay on his man. Garner left open, takes the jumper. It's going to be wide. No good. And the rebound to Javaris Hayes. When you see openings like that, lemoyne has got to make the shot. Okay, they don't, they're not going to get too many open looks, and that was one. Yeah, they don't look as relaxed offensively as they did in the last game from the very beginning. Maybe it's the zone. Maybe it's you know, knowing they have to stay on top of Javaris Hayes. Hayes will fire up another three, and he knocks another one down. Well, those are too easy. A screen set in front of them, Chris, that's a practice three-pointer. And now LeMoyne's down 10, 17 to 7. It's their biggest deficit since the Southern Connecticut game here three weeks ago. Game that went overtime. Now it's Garner. Entry pass to Nwandu. Nwandu inside on Connolly. Gets bumped by him. No call. Now he gets the shot to crawl up the front of the rim and a foul. Kobe Nwandu now with five points to lead Lemoyne. And it's the first foul on, of the ball game, believe it or not. Nearly halfway through the first half. Bolter is back in for Lord. Picks up the first foul. Kobe Nwandu, an 85% foul shooter to the line. Lemoyne is the best free throw shooting team in all of the country at just under 82%. Well, Lord's still in the game, so who oh, left? Okay. Who left? I don't know, but three point plays converted by Nwandu. He's now got six, doubling his total. McLaughlin's back on the bench. Okay. So Lemoyne's down seven again. Needing some stops. I'll tell you, if Javaris Hayes continues to make threes like he's doing in the early part of this game, it's going to make him even harder to guard, and that's already an impossible task. He gets the handoff here in the lane, well defended. Malik Garner's done a good job on him since he's come in the game. Here's Lord catching the handoff. Scoop cups it and called for a travel. Now O'Shea Gary is back in for Lemoyne, giving Kobe Nwandu his first break. No, he's going to come in for Roland, who gets his first breather. 10.33 to go, first half. Crawford is back in for Merrimack. Lord, not sure why that was a travel. He's saying, I took two steps, but he was, boy, nowhere he was near the basket. far from the That's basket. That's the problem. He got no style points on that move either. Near steal on the wing by Hayes, but the Dolphins get it. Hayes recovers to get back in front of Gary. Malik Garner back up top to Gary. Now to Garner. They want to get it inside. Instead, Garner's going to launch a three, and he knocks it down. The lefty who's been really shooting the three well lately has brought LeMoyne to within four. It's a 6-0 run for the green and goal. And we are now at the midway mark of the first half. Chris Bernozio, Don Family bringing you the action from a very frosty and cold Syracuse. Bolter straight on threes, fouled late by Asuncion Bird. He'll go to the line for three. Yeah, they don't need to foul him on that deep three. And he's been cold, too, so this might get him on track. We have a media timeout with 9.54 to go in this first half. And so far, it is Merrimack 17, Lemoyne 13. And we'll be back with more. You're watching Lemoyne Dolphins basketball on any 10 now.
de Bellas. For people who love subs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has been the largest distributor of team sports apparel and equipment in the United States. Your complete sports authority, BSN Sports features all the latest gear and team uniforms, and they're the number one dealer in the Northeast. Get connected 24-7 at bsnsports.com. BSN Sports, a proud corporate partner of Lemoyne Athletics. The Dolphins or Warriors, whoever wins this game, will play the winner of the game going on in the other semifinal down in West Haven, New Haven, and Southern Connecticut. Don, you've got that up on your laptop. And the Chargers lead the Owls right now by two. Southern Connecticut is at the line for free throws with 13.58 uh, to go. Good game there, which is what we expected. Ryan Bolter, a thousand point scorer and third team all conference player, will go to the line to try to get into the scorebook. He'll have three shots. He's an excellent free throw shooter at 87%. Hits the first. Merrimack, the team, shoots it at 73%. The second one is up and good. And one more are coming for the senior. It is up and it is good. So now all five starters have scored for Merrimack. Led by Hayes, who's got eight. 20 to 13 Merrimack. They've led throughout, scoring the first eight points of the game, leading by as many as 10. Kobe Nwandu backing in on Hayes. Now O'Shea Gary penetrates. Hands off to Brown, he bobbles it, gets it back. Now he circles into the lane, fires a jump pass out to Nwandu. Now to Malik Garner, another three. This one's good again. Chris, Malik Garner has been locked in since the moment he came in this game off the bench, not just with those three pointers, but defensively on Javaris Hayes. Yep, Lemoyne back within four, 20 to 16. He doesn't have the size that O'Shea Gary has, but he's got a lot of quickness and he's managed to stay between Hayes and the basket. Here's Khalif Crawford driving and a shot rejected by O'Shea Gary. Nawandu pulls it out of the air and dribbles up court. Kobe Nawandu back out to Brown. Lemoyne staring at the 2-3 zone again. Garner gets it into Nwandu in the heart of the zone. Goes up strong, the shot no good, but he drew the foul on Connolly for the second time. Although it's Connolly's, yeah, it's Connolly's second and the second on the team. It's a tough call on Connolly because Kobe was bumping into him to get to the basket. Connolly had his arms down instead of straight up in the air, and they're saying that's why the foul was called. First free throw, good. Uh, but I don't think he hit him with his arms. I think it was just with the body. Yeah, I think there was a bump. Kobe Nwandu, a second-team all-conference player. C.J. Asuncion Bird and uh, also Tom Brown were named to the honorable mention list, all-conference honors. Second free throw, also good. Kobe Nwandu now with eight points to lead Lemoyne and tie Javaris Hayes for game high score. More importantly, Lemoyne is back now within two, 20 to 18, with 8.44 to go in the first half. Both these two teams are excellent defensively, so we should have a low scoring affair. Mikey Watkins throws it back up to Bolter, now the left side. They're also both very patient offensively. Joyner to Lord, he's a very good three point shooter. Lost the ball, goes up strong, hit. Misses the running bank shot. Rebound by Brown. Long up court pass to Nwandu. Slams it down in transition. And now he's in double figures for the 13th straight game since he came back from his injury. Coincidentally, the game at Merrimack. And when Kobe is hot offensively, it helps his defense. 2020, approaching the eight minute mark. Top of the key, Khalif Crawford driving to his right. Run well, floater rims out. Asuncion Bird had the rebound, couldn't corral it. Bolter with a fall away jumper, good on the baseline to give Merrimack the lead back. Bolter. Bolter's first field goals got five points, and the second opportunity and a rare offensive rebound for Merrimack gives them the lead back. Merrimack is ranked 275th out of 306 teams in rebound margin. Partially, it's because they play the zone, and it's hard to rebound out of a zone. Here's Nwandu into the paint, out to Garner for three in the lead. No good, rebound by Asuncion Bird, goes up strong and ties the score. And you mentioned the zone, Chris. You can rebound out of the zone, but you have to find a body, and it's hard if you're only guarding space. It's Especially difficult. Especially if the other team is putting up outside shots. Once somebody drives to the basket, the zone becomes man-to-man. -man. You have to guard somebody. But if they're out taking threes... Walk-in shot good on the runner. That, which that was not a three. First a th bench points for them. 
then it is harder to find a man to guard. Lemoyne seeing some pressure in the backcourt, but Gary and Garner navigate it. Javar saves a rare moment on the bench. Down low, Kobe Dewandu, sandwiched between two players, finds Gary on the right side. He drives baseline, flips to Dewandu. He's fouled. Basket good to tie the game and a foul. Beautiful ball movement that time. The extra pass by Lemoyne's top assist man, O'Shea Gary. How about these numbers for O'Shea Gary? Coming into this game, his last eight games since he's come back to health, 33 assists, eight turnovers. Brian in for the Tom Brown gets a well-deserved rest. He's been fighting hard. He hasn't been able to touch the ball very much, but he is a focal point for the other team. If you're going to look at a player to stop on the Dolphins to disrupt their offense, it starts with Tom Brown. Jaleel Lord is called for the foul, his first, and he's replaced by McLaughlin, and Kobe Duwanda will go to the line to try to complete his second three-point play. He's three of three from the line thus far tonight. Shot is up, and Lemoyne has its first lead of the night. Baker's dozen for Kobe Nwandu, the 10th leading scorer in the league, and Lemoyne's up 25-24. And with Justin Connolly on the bench, the Dolphins are playing without a true post player in the game right now. How about that? Javar Hayes back in, out to Bolter, a three for the lead, good! I think it makes sense. You've got to stay on Merrimack shooters, and Bolter's getting hot now. Kobe Nwandu, Lemoyne's tallest player on the floor, is going to have to stay in front of him. It's his first three. Lemoyne's now down two, 27-25. 6.20 to go in this already very good semifinal game. Here's Malik Garner penetrating out to Asuncion Bird. Back to Roland. Reverses it back to Asuncion Bird. Another floater ties the game again. Chris, in the last, let's say, four or five games, we have seen like a new arsenal from C.J. Asuncion Bird. He's very creative. Made so many different types of shots, and it looks like he's just it, it looks like he's practiced them forever. He's just never shown them to us in a game before. Watkins coming around the curl. Plows into his defender. And they're going to call a blocking foul. We'll that, that, looked, that looked like a textbook charge right there. Watkins was out of control, but they're going to call Garner for the foul. No, no, it's on CJ. That's why it's a foul. I okay. agree with you. That would have been a charge. Right. So they call a reach in before? That's the second foul on CJ. Wow. And Patrick Beeline and the, and the coaches for LeMoyne are not happy with that call. And it's going to be free throws for Mikey Watkins. CJ's been playing so well in the last few possessions. They yep. don't want to have to take him off the floor. Watkins, not a good foul shooter for a freshman at 58%. And it'll be a two-shot foul. No Merrimack Warriors in the lane, and he misses the first. You say for a freshman, I think he meant for, for a guard, a guy that's handling the ball right. a lot. And also for, him to I just wanted to get in that he was a freshman, but I, yes. I hear you. Out of Roselle, New Jersey. Get one more chance to put Merrimack back on top, and he converts. Watkins with three off the bench. Lemoyne down 28-27. And Asuncion Bird stays on the floor with the two fouls. Some pressure in the backcourt, but here's Malik Garner breaking it. Well, the senior, I think the coaching staff expects him to be able to play with those fouls, and we are down to just a little more than five minutes to go in the half. Garner passes to Asuncion Bird into the corner, and Roland. Roland bounces back to Garner, pump fake. Now here's Garner, or Gary, in a reach-in foul called on Javaris Hayes. That'll be the fourth foul on the Warriors, first on their superstar point guard. Chris, one of the things LeMoyne can do to help their offense, they do it anyway, is be patient, make Merrimack work for 25, 30 seconds. It's a lot of, lot of uh, work to do to shut a team down. LeMoyne's been very patient, but they've got to be better with the ball. Bad pass by Garner, and Kobe Nwadu couldn't uh, corral it. Javaris Hayes falls down, but he continues the dribble. Now gets the return pass from Joyner. Down low, one-handed zip pass into the corner. Watkins thought about the three. Gary closes ground on him. Now it's Idris Joyner handing off to Watkins. Watkins drives on Gary. Took a step, and it'll be called for traveling. Great defense by O'Shea Gary to stay in front of the little guy. And now Khalif Crawford is back in, replacing Watkins, who was a little out of control in his last two very aggressive drives. But uh, I really like Watkins. I, I think he's a tremendous young player. And he'll be playing Division One ball starting next year as Merrimack makes the move up to the Northeast Conference, leaving the NE10 with 14 teams and two equal seven-team divisions. From one Northeast Conference to another. Yeah, just minus the 10. Good defense by Merrimack. LeMoyne throws it back out. Now the shot clock's in single digits. 
Gary gives up the dribble, finds Nuwandu in the heart of the zone, back out to uh, Garner for three, and the lead, no good, Bolter, the weak side rebound. So after making two threes, Garner's missed two in a row. Crawford shot, no good off the front rim, but he got fouled. Bailout foul for uh, Lemoyne because uh, Merrimack, it wasn't a very good shot by Crawford. As we reach our final media timeout of the first half, 4.27 to go in the first period. It's Merrimack 28, Lemoyne 27. Located just off campus in Carrier Circle, Crest Hill Suites is the preferred hotel partner of Lemoyne College Athletics. Designed ideally for the business person and frequent traveler, Crest Hill Suites provides free wireless internet service, a complimentary hot breakfast, and a free light social hour. Log on to Crest Hill Suites com to book your next day. New Haven right now with a 20 to 12 lead over Southern Connecticut. 9:42 to go in the first half. All right. So Southern Connecticut has to win that game to make the NCAA tournament, as they are 10th in the most recent uh, regional rankings that were released today. Lemoyne is up to three in the region from number four last week. They've gone up a notch each of the last two weeks, and um, Merrimack is right now in the five spot. New Haven's in the four spot, and Southern Connecticut's at the 10. In effect, Don, because there are too many teams ahead of them, they would have to get to the seven to make it up to the, um, uh, to make it into the L NCAA tournament as a potential at large. Not gonna happen, but uh, they need to win at New Haven and then win the championship game against the winner of this game tonight here to make it into the NCAAs. New Haven's already in, Lemoyne and Merrimack are already in the field. Not officially, but we know it's gonna happen because of right. their bodies of work. And there aren't enough games to make that much of a change in the regional rankings. Kendra Sheehan was just eavesdropping on the Lemoyne huddle. What you got for us? It was a little bit of deja vu from the first huddle that I stopped in earlier in the match when they were down by around eight points. But he said they are doing better offensively and defensive, but there's still more they can do off the ball. Movement off the ball needs to be better. And even when Kobe takes the ball out to the wings, the other players need to still be driving into the paint. Okay, thank you for that analysis. Free throws for Khalif Crawford coming now. And the sophomore's an 83% foul shooter. Merrimack again elects not to send anyone to the, uh, the lane as he hits the first. Crawford staring at the rim. Shot is up and good. He's got five, and the Dolphins trail 30-27. Here's Roland working it up the near sideline and getting it to Gary. Well, Moyne's been able to break the pressure in the backcourt with no problem, but it does take five or six seconds to do so. It doesn't give them as much time to get into their offense. I don't think that matters so much as the ball's knocked away by Crawford, steal by Merrimack. I think the reason it does is that they have to be patient against the zone. Deep three by Bolter, no good, bit of a force, rebound by O'Shea Gary. I know that he can hit that shot, but here's Asuncion Burr bounces, intending it for a Sun or to Asuncion Burr, or for Tom Brown. And they're going to say that it's Merrimack ball, even though the Lemoyne bench is up in arms saying that was definitely deflected, but not going to win the call. Now, the, the reason I say it makes a difference in this game, Chris, is you can see how deliberate Lemoyne has to be against the zone. Against another team, they can probably get into their office and set more quickly. Right. But, but now they only but had... they're a patient team to begin with. In so. that case, they only had 21 seconds to set something up. And maybe it's, for, it's causing Lemoyne's offense to... Speed up a little faster than they like. They look a little bit off. Hayes misses a shot, misses his wow. follow. Rebound in the hands of Roland. A rare missed layup for <laughs> Javaris Hayes. Here's Tom Brown putting it on the floor, but kicking it back out. He's been uh, pretty much stopped from doing anything in the paint by the Merrimack interior D. Kobe Nwandu backing in, slinks between a couple of defenders, drags That's the pivot the foot. Yep. They call him for the travel. Absolutely. So the Dolphins have come up empty since tying the game the last time at 27-27. Luckily for them, their defense has held Merrimack to just three free throws over that stretch. Now Tim Level is into the game for Lemoyne as Patrick Beeline goes a little deeper into the bench. Tim Level is a guy that hasn't shot particularly for a high percentage this year, but he is explosive and can put points up in a hurry. Tim Level, a 6'4 sophomore out of Marion, Indiana. And his defense has improved as the season has gone on. Yep, he's a big guard. O'Shea Gary guarded by another Lemoyne big guard, and actually it's Javaris Hayes, and he dribbles himself into a corner and out of bounds. 
I don't understand what we just saw. No, and and you could take a picture of it because it ain't going to happen much. More. It might not have ever happened again in his career. He just kind of shrugged his shoulders like he doesn't know what happened. Another 1,000-point-plus scorer in Javaris Hayes. He's seventh in the league in scoring, second in assists, first in steals, ninth in offensive rebounds, and eighth in field goal percentage. And a lot of Division One teams that are going to be happy to see Merrimack come in, but they're not going to be happy to see Javaris Hayes. Nice feed again by O'Shea Gary to find Tom Brown cutting down the back door. And he gets the flip to go in for his second hoop. And LeMoyne's within one. It's 30-29 Merrimack. Two and a half minutes to go first half. Jaleel Lord back over to Bolter. Right side to Javaris Hayes wearing the navy blue headband. Now it's Joyner back to Hayes. Sets a pick for Hayes. Works around it. Left side. Here's a three-pointer by Crawford that's good. Crawford's second triple. He's got eight points. Third Merrimack player with eight along with Joyner. Actually with uh, Hayes and... Bolter. Well, good news for LeMoyne. They've taken away the inside game. They're helping out. They're taking away the drive to the basket. The bad news is Merrimack's finding some open, open shooters. And they're making them. Seven yep. out of, they've made seven threes here in the first half. Down low, Asuncio Burr with a nifty reverse layup. He's four for four off the bench for eight points. And LeMoyne's back within two, 33-31. And each shot has been completely different. You're right. Well, two floaters were similar, but from different parts of different the floor. Part. And that one's going under the basket for the Weak side layup. He's he's very s sneaky uh, good as Bolter hits the uh, layup from the right blocks. I think that's smart to try to get him down low because Lemoyne has no one in there big enough to guard him. First player in double figures for Merrimack with 10. Dolphins down four again, 35-31. Lemoyne does not trail at the half much this year. They're two and four when they're down at the half. Here's Tim Level, bounces into a Sunsion Bird. He finds some way, room inside, and he, his scoop layup is no good. Fight for the rebound, and Javaris Hayes comes out of the crowd with it. I think he was bumped on that, and that's what threw him off. And here's a layup by Hayes that sneaks its way in. Javaris Hayes now with 10, the timeout by Patrick Beeline, who was giving all sorts of hell, heck to uh, Ryan yeah, Dumont, yeah, the official. He's not happy. He believes there was contact on that end, too. I do, too. I think that's why CJ missed it. He was thrown up just a bit. But the officials have let both teams play. There really hasn't been any heavy contact in this game. Patrick Beeline, whose father, John Beeline, the Michigan coach, is in attendance today, flew in for this one and is sitting behind the LeMoyne bench. Patrick still very upset as his team is now down 37-31 with one minute to go in this first half. Be sure to visit the LeMoyne College Bookstore located at the plaza across campus. The bookstore not only offers a wide selection of school supplies, it's also a convenient resource for personal items, novelties, and books of general interest. Well, out of town, New Haven leads Southern Connecticut 28-25, 421 to go in that game. We expected a close game there, and what a rivalry. It's a city rivalry. It's uh, a big game, a semifinal uh, NE10 tournament game. And uh, right now, the winner of that game will play the winner of this game. And looks as if, at the moment, it might be Merrimack, if they can hang on to this lead, getting to the NE10 tournament championship game for the first time since 2000. That's the last time it happened when they beat AIC in a game that I attended at the Volpe Complex way back when. I'm trying to remember the name of that really, really good guard that AIC had. It would transfer from Division I Temple. Remember him? Oh, what yeah. was his name? His first name and last name, I believe, started with the same letter, but I can't remember who it is off the top of my head. Maybe someone will text me the info. But he was, he was an amazing player. But Merrimack won the game. Here's O'Shea Gary, hops in the lane. Looking for an outlet, back out to Asuncion Bird. Well defended on the baseline by Bolter and gets it back out. Five seconds to shoot. O'Shea Gary is going to have to do something. He fires up an angle three. It's an air ball. Comes to Kobe Duwandu. He lays it up, but they say he released, released it after the buzzer. Yep. So a bad break for Lemoyne there as Merrimack again with fantastic defense. And Merrimack now will call the use it or lose it timeout as Malik Garner gets ready to check back in for the Dolphins. Well, Lemoyne looked like they uh, had gotten this game back to a back-and-forth type game, but a couple tough possessions for them. And a couple of tough calls against yeah. them, to be honest here. Nez Gurkhan ready to check back in for Lemoyne, too, with 28.8 to go in the half. You certainly can't say this is a home job by the officiating. They've been uh, very much down the line, and if anything, they've given Merrimack a couple of benefits of the doubt. But not that it's affected the score, really. But LeMoyne's got to survive the half. They'll make adjustments at the half. 
We know how well they've been in the second half of games this year, but they need to keep this game close. So this is a very big defensive possession for LeMoyne. I think that's why Malik Garner's back in there. He has shown that he's been the most effective defender against Javaris Hayes early on. So far, that's correct. Garner didn't play much. In fact, he didn't play at all against Merrimack the first meeting in January 19th as he had, has gone through a couple of problems health-wise. Actually, he did play against Merrimack in the game, but was was limping. Lemoyne showing a little zone here now, too. Here's a three by Bolter in the corner. That's way long. Rebound by Kobe Nwandu. time for Lemoyne. Speed dribble. Here's Kobe Nwandu with a floater on the lane. Tapped up at the buzzer. Off the rim by Gurkhan. Lemoyne will go into the locker room. Down by six. 37 to 31. I think they have to be happy with what happened on the defensive end, but a little... Exactly sure how much time was on the clock. That's not really a shot we normally see from him, a no. push shot at that point. But and even with that miss, they almost had time it was, to tip it It in. was a little short, and Gurkhan with the tip up, his first shot attempt of the game in the final second of the half, just not enough. So, well, uh, if you're looking at it from a LeMoyne standpoint, the positive is the Dolphins didn't play very well in the first 20 minutes. They're only down six. The negative is that Merrimack is... Uh, is really bearing the threes. Five different players have a total of seven threes against LeMoyne. And going into this game, the Dolphins were the stingiest team in the league and giving up the fewest threes by far in the conference with 159 allowed. And over the last four games, LeMoyne opponents were shooting 16 of 61 from three for 26%. Joey Gallo waiting for the stats before he goes into the locker room. I'm sure he's happy with the score, but no coach is ever completely thrilled with what's going on. So, And, and we got to thank Jacob Van Ryan, formerly uh, a member of the uh, Northeast 10 Conference and uh, now uh, working uh, at another conference. And he is Johnny on the spot telling us Malik Moore was oh, the player gosh. we were thinking yep. of for AIC. And, you know, I know I'm getting older when I'm starting to forget names of the great players. You sometimes forget the marginal players, but Malik Moore is a, is a man that if you ever saw him play, you'd remember him. A very explosive guard with a D1 kind of game. But uh, thanks to Jacob Van Ryan, our buddy. And the Dolphins trail 37-31 at the break. Looking at the statistics, the Dolphins shot 46% from the floor. Merrimack 50%. From three-point range, though, Merrimack 7 of 12 for 58%. That's what's killing the Dolphins here. LeMoyne just 3 of 10 from the line. Merrimack is 6 of, or from the three-point three line. line yeah. Right. From the foul line, Le Merrimack is 6 of 7. LeMoyne 4 of 4, all from Kobe Nuwandu. Dolphins are a plus 2 on the glass, 14 to 12. They've been out-assisted 6-4, and they've turned it over twice more, 8-6. to six. LeMoyne has, turns it over fewer than any other team in the league at 10.8 per game, but... They're way ahead of uh, their average with eight against this tough Merrimack defense tonight. Merrimack has four of the six steals. LeMoyne has the only blocked shot, that for Moshe Gary. Points in the paint favor LeMoyne, 18 to eight. Points off turnovers favor the Dolphins, five to three. Both teams have a second chance basket. Merrimack is nine to two on the fast break. And LeMoyne's bench, as usual, outscoring the opposing reserves, 14 to three, as Merrimack leads at the break, 37 to 31. Biggest lead of the first half was Merrimack, 17 to seven. LeMoyne had a one point lead on one occasion at 25-24. There were numerous ties as well. Four of them as a matter of fact. The last one at 27-27, but Merrimack with a 10-4 spurt to end the first half leads by six at the break. Well, these new box scores are a little tougher to look at. There's a couple of columns that we, they are awful. that we don't like. But there is a column all the way on the right-hand side, the plus-minus column, that is interesting. It shows what happened scoring for the team while you were on the court. And I think it's no surprise. The Dolphins have a lot of negative numbers on there, except when Malik Garner's in the game. The Dolphins have gained seven points. When Malik's on the floor, I think not only the three-pointers he hit, but his defense on Javaris Hayes has been exceptional. Yeah, Javaris was four for his first four, including a couple of three-pointers, but he's 0 for three since, including two layups in one sequence, though he was in traffic. But you almost expect superhero-type uh, work out of him. Well, LeMoyne has slowed him down, but they need, need to not only slow him down, but take away the uh, pass to the perimeter. But you kind of have to pick your poison. What do you do if you try to 
help out on Javaris Hayes, you're leaving guys open. But if you try to guard him one-on-one, -on -one, he can burn you. I think we're going to see a lot of Malik Garner on Javaris Hayes in the second half. He's the one man who's been able to stay with him one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Khalif Crawford, two of two from three-point range, that's something that doesn't usually happen. He's 34 of 114 on the season for 29%. So that's hurting LeMoyne, too. Is And Ryan Bolter, who's normally uh, their most reliable three-point shooter, is one of five. So go figure. Hey, yeah. Uh, Individual change from game to game. Matchups are different. The zone... Uh, changes things a bit. Certainly for LeMoyne offensively, they don't look as comfortable as they normally are. They're trying to be patient, but it's taking some time for them to get the ball up the court, and then it looks like they may be hurrying things a little bit, causing them to throw the ball, maybe timing off a little bit. A couple of these turnovers have been passes that have been tipped by Dolphins, not by um, Merrimack. Two Merrimack players, like they just weren't in sync offensively. Well, individually, LeMoyne is being led by Kobe Nwandu, who's got a game-high 13 points. Also has four rebounds to lead the club. Off the bench, C.J. Asuncion Bird has eight points, four of five shooting. Malik Garner has six points, made a couple of three-pointers. And Tom Brown's got four. Gurkhan, Gary, Roland did not score. Ryan Roland, a mystery in this one, as he is 0 for 3 for the floor in 13 minutes of play. And he's been uh, really scoring at will for LeMoyne in recent games. But he had a couple open looks in the first half and did not score. And that's all he got. Yeah. Tim Lovell also did not score in just under three minutes of play. For Merrimack, it's Ryan Boulder and Javaris Hayes with 10 points and four rebounds apiece. Hayes has four assists to go along with his uh, 10 points. His, his one turnover was the oddest one we'll ever see from him. Yeah, he dribbled out of bounds. He just kept dribbling like the court was longer. Yeah. Khalif Crawford with eight points right at his seasonal average. Uh, and three points each from Idris Joyner, Jaleel Lord, and Mikey Watkins. Well, a little easier for the home team in the uh, other semifinal game. New Haven leads Southern Connecticut 41-30 to at the half. Darius Roundtree with a layup at the buzzer. Wow, he doesn't play much. Surprising he's in the game. 37-31, LeMoyne trails here. The winner of this game plays the winner of the New Haven Southern Connecticut game in Saturday's championship game. If it's here, we'll have the game for you live at 12.45 for the Pepsi Courtside Show, 1 o'clock for the tip. As uh, LeMoyne would be playing against the winner of the game tonight down in New Haven. If it's at Merrimack, well then, I'm sorry, if Merrimack wins this game, they will play at home if it's Southern Connecticut and on the road if it's New Haven winning the other game. The women here at LeMoyne will play tomorrow night in a semifinal game against New Haven, speaking of which, and uh, I know that Kendra Sheehan is, a, is an announcer with us that has seen the women's team play for quite a bit. And, uh, before we get your reaction on the men's game, Kendra, just want to ask you uh, what your thoughts are about LeMoyne coming uh, off of uh, an impressive win against the Merrimack women and uh, going up against New Haven, a team that just nipped LeMoyne on the road in the last regular season game. Yeah, LeMoyne, the women's team are in a good a good place right now. They have such a they have such depth across their bench. They have players that have the ability to come off the bench and impact the team right away. They have Madison Purcell, the senior. She was out for several games to, due to an injury. She's back. She will bring leadership to this relatively young Dolphins team headed in the playoff. Liz Malay, Michaela Roberts, Jenna Zimmerman all stepping up. Combined, they have a fairly good chance, a fairly good offense uh, going into this New Haven game. Okay, and now your thoughts, Kendra, on this first half in which LeMoyne has uh, struggled on both ends of the floor, but only trails 37-31. Uh, you had a chance to listen in on Patrick Beeline's um, timeouts, and the one with one minute to go in the game, he looked very, uh, very upset when he was addressing his team. I think the entire audience behind him could hear what he was saying. He was screaming at his players to tighten up, and he was saying that his teammates need to help the others when Mary Mack puts up the screen, and they need to go back to playing simple. They're forgetting a lot of the basics, and that's what's really causing them in this close game right now. Okay, thank you, Kendra Sheehan. We'll be around here for the, uh, the women's semifinal tomorrow against New Haven, and the winner of that one will play the championship game on Sunday against the winner of the Bentley St. Anselm game which will also be tomorrow night in Waltham.
Massachusetts. That'll be another big game. But really, this point of the season, even teams that you wouldn't expect to have made the semifinals, for instance, of, of a conference tournament, all these teams are good. It doesn't matter who you play. They got there for being a good team. We expect these games to be close and hard fought. Again, 41-30 to 30 for uh, New Haven over Southern Connecticut right now. Expected that game to stay close, but New Haven pulled away just at the end of the half. We'll see if Southern Connecticut can respond. Only 30 points for them. Not, their, uh, um, off, not the offensive output they've had in their most recent games. Dolphin fans begin each week by reading the Sunday Playbook on Twitter at Inside the L. Posted each Sunday evening, each week's entry features an inspirational quotation and explanation aiming to enlighten, encourage, and inspire all who read it. So be sure to follow the Sunday Playbook on Twitter at Inside the L and InsideTheL.com. Well, Merrimack leads Lemoyne 37-31 at halftime. We're happy you can join us here at the Newly uh, remodeled Lemoyne Event Center in Syracuse, where it was a frosty nine degrees at game time, and we understand that uh, there is snow to our north, uh, and a lot of it. Yeah, it's all right as long as it's to our north, and yeah. you get to drive home to the south. Yes. But it reminds me a little bit of two years ago when Lemoyne hosted the regional here, and the snow was so bad they had to postpone the championship, the championship game. game and move it to the next day. That same day, Syracuse University in a very rare postponement, had to move a game as well. The concern wasn't that the Carrier Dome roof couldn't support the snow. I mean, they turn up the heat in there to melt the snow off the roof. It was that the roads were so bad that there were, if there were any issues, any emergencies with all the traffic for that game, it would be hard to get an ambulance just up and down the hill to get to the building. They decided to wait till the next day, which was a smart move. The weather was much nicer the day after. Well, the Michigan Wolverines, whose head coach, former LeMoyne coach, John Beeline, is in attendance tonight behind us. Always a pleasure to renew acquaintances with him. When you and I were as students back here in the 80s, Don, we remember when this new coach was brought in. We had no idea who he was, and all of a sudden he became one of the best coaches in all of college basketball. Replaced Mike Lee, correct? Yes, Mike Lee, right. And um, his son, Patrick, played for Stonehill against LeMoyne. Years late, decades later. And his daughter, Tori Lee, played for the Lamar right, women's that's team. Right, that's right. Well, the Michigan Wolverines, ranked uh, number nine in the country, will be taking on uh, number six Michigan State on Saturday, the second meeting in just over, or just around two weeks. And uh, that'll be at 8 p.m. and part of a big-time college basketball doubleheader on, uh, on television as Duke of North Carolina, of course, the... Uh, Tobacco Road uh, rivals will also play on that day. Last day of the regular season. Michigan comes off a win at number 17 Maryland last Sunday, 69 to 62. Five players reached double figures for the Wolverines, led by Izzy Brasdakis, 21.7 rebounds. Xavier Simpson had 12 points, 10 assists. And John Teske had a double-double as well, 11 points and 10 rebounds. And I'll give you the updated um, rankings. Michigan okay. State's no longer number six. They lost right, to Indiana. Right, they have lost to Indiana, yeah. They dropped to number nine. Okay. So what you're going to get on Saturday evening is number three, North Carolina, number four, Duke. Great rivalry. Duke's real rival. It's not, it's, as much as people in Syracuse like to think that Duke's Syracuse's rival, that's the rivalry. And, w and w the winner will definitely get a number one seed, regardless of what happens in the ACC tournament. Yep. Michigan ranked number seven. Michigan State number nine. You still have four top ten teams and two enormous rivalries. Two playing on that state rivalries, that's, yeah. That, what a great night for basketball. So if it's snowing like this and uh, you're stuck at home if, and you're a basketball fan, it won't matter. You'll have some great basketball to to watch as we head into March Madness. I can say that, right? It's not uh, it It's not copyrighted. No, it's not. You can say it here in Division Two, right? It's still considered March Madness. Yep. Um, nearby Colgate University, the men's team also having a great season. Um, on the last day of the season, uh, beat um, Lafayette on the road to clinch first in their conference, and they will be home throughout the playoffs as long as they win. It's been a great year for basketball here in the Northeast, and if Syracuse University can kind of turn it around before they go to the NCAA tournament, and it's pretty much a lock that they're going to be in. They have some really good wins. Um, 
we could have a very exciting March. Still would like it to stop snowing, though. Well, it's not snowing at the moment, thank God. Well, you know what I mean, snowing, yeah. period. I mean, you yeah. look outside here, it's tundra. I mean, we've had years where we've got no snow in March. None. Not this year. Yep. But basketball's an indoor sport, fortunately, so we don't have to worry about that too much. That's here. true, as long as you can get to the game. Which sometimes has been an issue, as and you mentioned. And if you mentioned. can't get to the game, as we say, you can watch it online. Right here. Any 10 now. Any 10 now. Yeah. Well, the Dolphins have some work to do here as we get set for the second half, trailing 37-31 to the Merrimack Warriors. And what could be the last ever meeting between these two Catholic schools and solid basketball programs. And two uh, great friends as head yes. coaches. Joey Gallo and Patrick Beeline, very, very close friends. They were assistant coaches uh, for... Uh, at Dartmouth, Dartmouth together not so long ago, less than a decade ago. Ivy League uh, program in it, New it Hampshire. How, how great both of them have been, not just as coaches on the court, but to their teams and schools off the court. You know, next year, Joey Gallo will be coaching a Division One team, and it's a pretty safe bet that in the not-so-distant future, <laughs> Patrick, yes, Patrick Beeline, Beeline will be following his dad that direction as well. His father, who's in attendance today. Yes. In fact, um, holding what's court his dad's record stand. here watching his son coach? I'd have to Think look about that up. It. They, he, they beat St. Michael's two years ago. Uh, lost at Bellarmine. I'm, I, I'd, have to, I'd have to think. I don't was remember. He, here exactly. he was game? here for the um, the game in the NCAA tournament last year against Jefferson, which Lemoyne won. It's probably a little over 500. Let's still look guess. it up. Yeah, it'd be hard to find though, because I don't remember exactly what days he was here. No, I but Craig of, Lane can help us with that. True. I'm sure he knows. That's true. Merrimack will have first possession of the second half, and Lemoyne trails by six. They've had only one lead in this game. That was at 25-24, and it lasted about 13 seconds. Same starters on the court for both teams. No one in any significant foul trouble. A couple players with two apiece, and that's it. Merrimack has Jaleel Lord, Ryan Bolter, Idris Joyner, Javaris Hayes, and Khalif Crawford. Lemoyne with Kobe Nwandu, Tom Brown, Nesdek Gurkhan, O'Shea Gary, and Ryan Rowland. Here's a quick shot by uh, Javaris Hayes. He misses. Misses his follow. Second uh, follow is also no good. He's 0 for 3 in that possession. He did get Off a few rebounds out of it. Yeah. And he, a lot of offensive rebounds. Down low, here's Gurkhan with a pump fake. Lays it up and in. Power move by Nesdak Gurkhan on the feed. Within four. And good defense by Nez on the other end. He was one of the players in there helping out against Hayes. Hayes trying to start the second half the way he did the first half. Feed down low to Bolter. He's got the layup. Nice pass. And one of, from the best passer, in my mind, in Division Chris, Two. Not just the pass, but what a move by Bolter. They timed it perfectly, cutting baseline so quickly, getting behind the defense. Once he got on the weak side, he was able to catch it, stop on a dime, turn and shoot. That's a dozen for the senior. Tom Brown's got it. Bounce down low to Gurkhan. Gets a man in the air, gets fouled. I think Idris Joyner will be called for this one. Now it's on Jaleel Lord, his second. And that'll send Nez Gurkhan, a 70% foul shooter, to the line. Actually, he's a little under. He was 7 of 10 as a Dolphin. Joined the team mid-season. He's now 7 of 11 after missing his only attempt in the last game. So he's at 64% and misses the first. First Dolphin miss from the line today. They are 4 out of 5. Merrimack is five out of, or 6 out of 7. Next shot for the for the Turk is good. He's got three all here in the second half. Lemoyne's only three second half points, and Dolphins are back within five. 39-34 playing the uphill battle against Merrimack. Javaris Hayes on the right side. Cuts inside, layup good with the right hand. Javaris Hayes now with a dozen, and his first points since early in the ball game, or relatively early, about eight minutes into the game. Chris, I don't know how you can keep Malik Garner on the bench for too long. Yeah, they need his defense. They do. Right side and Roland, who's still scoreless in this game. Dolphins in the home white. Merrimack in the road, navy blue. O'Shea Gary dribbled himself into a corner. Here's a corner three by Brown. No good. Rebound taken by Lord. Merrimack gets on the Dolphin shooters pretty quickly, and they seem to be rushing the shots a little bit. That time, Tom Brown trying to get it up before the defense could get Hayes, there. Hayes, beautiful bounce pass to Joyner, who's got the layup off the left glass. Joyner now with five points. As Gherkin coming over to help block out Hayes, left his man open. And Lemoyne is now down nine, 43-34. Merrimack led by as many as 10 in the first half. 
What do you do? Pick your poison. You got to help out when when Hayes penetrates. Yeah. Here's Nwandu in the paint. Spins, kicks it out to O'Shea Gary. Gary back to the right wing and rolling. Bounce entry to Gurkhan. Gurkhan, a fall away in the lane. Off the rim, no good. Hayes, a rebound. Gurkhan with a nice soft shot, but just not the right touch. And no surprise, Chris. Malik Garner getting ready to come in. Oh, and here's a strip by O'Shea Gary. Took it, knocked it free from Joyner, or from uh, Hayes. And it leads to a layup miss by O'Shea Gary. The Dolphins blow a two on one fast break. Yeah, they didn't really space it very well. And with a 6-7 bolter under there, they were both too close to him. O'Shea didn't get Gar a good look. Gary's now 0 for 3 from the floor, and the Dolphins trail by 9, still missing a beautiful opportunity to get some momentum and two points. And on the other end of the floor, Chris, Kobe Nwandu um, and Javar Hayes were both on the floor, both talking to the official at the same time. And Garner is in for Gary, as you predicted. Garner working on Hayes, who's dribbling backwards. And now they had to switch. Now he tries to convert down low and draws the foul on Gurkhan. And Javaris Hayes will go to the line for two. Nez is doing everything he can, but once the switch happened, he couldn't leave Hayes, couldn't give him a clear path to the basket. That's just great offense by Merrimack to set the screen, to switch the Dolphin defender so Javaris Hayes had a mismatch. And he'll go to the line for the first time today as Asuncion Bird is ready to check back in for Lemoyne. Javaris Hayes, a 70% foul shooter. First one is up and no good. He missed three straight down the stretch in the Adelphi game in the final seconds, but uh, they managed to still withstand the, the last uh, opportunities for Adelphi and win that game to get here. Second shot for Hayes to make it a 10-point game. It is up and it's good. Hayes with 13 to lead Merrimack and tie Kobe Nwanda for game high. Pressure in the backcourt. And Garner brings it across. This matches the largest lead of the game. Merrimack led 17-7. The Dolphins came back to take a brief lead. Now they're going to have to do it again. A feed down low and a layup mid-air by C.J. Asuncion Bird, who's 5 of 6 from the floor and reaches double figures for the 14th straight time as a reserve. He's had a great senior season. Yep. 44-36, Dolphins in zone now. Merrimack should be very familiar with this as they face it every day in practice. Rolling a near steal on Hayes, who manages to keep possession. Okay. Now a no-look pass into the corner. Here's Bolter driving, feeding Joyner down low, gets Tom Brown in the air, and Brown fouls him. He gets the ball, but also got him with the body. Foul number four, Tom Brown, Brown picks up first his first foul. And what's interesting about Tom Brown, an honorable Brown mention all-conference team, in his last nine games, he played 302 minutes and was called for a total of eight fouls and just had five turnovers. So he's almost always given you positives and almost no negatives. So that's just his ninth foul in the last nine games. Ten games. So the first free throw is good by Joyner. He'll get another. First time that the junior has been to the stripe tonight. 70% shooter on the season. Deliberate at the line. Misses the second. Tom Brown the rebound. And Lemoyne down nine. 45-36. Almost four minutes gone by in the second half. Malik Garner with it. Back to Roland. Bounces to Asuncion Bird in the corner. Now to Tom Brown. Fall away. Angle jumper. Banks it in. Tom Brown, 3 of 4 from the floor. 6 points. Brings LeMoyne within 7. 15.55 to go. Second half. Chris Bernozio, Don Famolo coming to you live from Syracuse. The LeMoyne Events Center in the NE10 Championship Semifinal. Hayes back again. Getting it to Bolter. Back to Hayes. Hayes working on Asuncion Bird. Stays in front of him. That's now one reason, ooh. I was going to say one reason CJ's in the game, he can help defend. And great defense by Ryan Rowland forces the turnover by Khalif Crawford on the baseline. On that switch off, Nez Gurkin cannot stay with Javaris Hayes. But with CJ in the game when that happens, you got another good defender that picks him up. Watkins and McLaughlin are in for Lord and Crawford. The Dolphins have a chance to get closer now, trailing by seven. Roland passes to the right side and Tom Brown 
He drives into the lane, skips a pass into the corner to Garner. Garner, angle dribble into the paint. Flips it up, got it knocked away. And long rebound comes to Merrimack. Mikey Watkins over to McLaughlin on the left side. Jump stops and gets it back to Watkins. Joyner with a good job knocking the ball away. I don't think he'll get a blocked shot. Watkins, a three off the dribble. Good! Mikey Watkins becomes the sixth different Merrimack Warrior to hit a triple. And now LeMoyne is down 10 again, matching their biggest deficit, 48-38. Garner, still dribbling, now Brown with it. Pass down low between the uh, defenders and another reverse layup for C.J. Asuncion Bird, who's got a dozen now. 48-40 Merrimack, 14-37 to go, second period. Javaris Hayes with tattoos festooned on his right forearm, sleeve on his left, uh, left arm. Watkins hands off to McLaughlin. Into the paint, back out. Hayes, extra passing around the perimeter. Good passing by Merrimack. Watkins gives up the dribble, looking for a cutter. Now finds Joyner, a step back jumper. No good to beat the shot clock, rebound Nwanda with two hands. Now a pass up court. Roland knocks, can't hang on to it. It's a three on two the other way. Here's Bolter going in for the scoop layup. That's good, and a Dolphin turnover leads to two easy points. And led him a little too far on that pass. Bolter with 14 to lead all scorers now. And the Dolphins are down 10 again, 50 to 40. Roland bounces to Nwandu, baseline. Well defended by Joyner. Hands off to Brown. Now a feed down low to Asuncion Bird. Tries another reverse. Good and a foul. McLaughlin tried to work through him, but got him on his go up. Suncion Bird's been the lifeblood for Lemoyne. He's got a team best 14 points as we reach immediate timeout. 13.39 to go in the second half. It's Merrimack 50, Lemoyne 42. And we'll be back with more. You're watching NE10 now. Lauren Zazaro and Morgan Chapman visit with Coach Gina Castelli and Pat Beeline each week on Heights Hoopla. the Lemoyne Dolphins online team shop at lemoynedolphins.com slash shop to show off your green and gold pride and style. Featuring the latest Nike apparel and hundreds of different designs, the new Dolphins team shop has you covered. Shop from the comfort of your home or office at lemoynedolphins.com slash shop. Out of town scores, New Haven 46, Southern Connecticut 36, nearing the 16 minute mark of the second half. So New Haven, if these scores hold, would host the championship game on Saturday. Lemoyne hoping to uh, say that it's here. But they got some work still to do, down by seven, but Asuncion Bird will go to the line for a free throw, to try to bring Lemoyne a little closer. Well, down eight. Hopefully, oh, down eight, right. Hopefully down seven after the free throw. Asuncion Bird, an 83% foul shooter. How do you stop that move? If you try to go to the weak side, he's just going to go up and put up a layup. Free throw good. 15 now, game high score for Suncion Bird off the bench. And Lemoyne trails by seven now. Javaris Hayes tries to go baseline, passes to Joyner, back out to Bolter, back into Joyner, back to Bolter. A three off the right wing, off the rim long, a rebound by Nwandu. And Kobe was stuck guarding Javaris Hayes on that possession, but once Javaris gave up the ball, no one got the ball back to him. Roland bounces into the heart of the zone. Tom Brown, push shot, good. And it's a five-point game. Brown now with eight points. 50-45, Merriman. Here's Hayes working on Garner. Garner wearing the long uh, leggings, the white leggings on both legs. Staying in front of him. One-handed pass right side to McLaughlin. Now back to Joyner. Joyner hands off to Watkins. Watkins turns on the baseline. Well defended. Shot clock's down to two. Joyner has to force one up. Off the back rim, no good. Great Dolphin defense. And Asuncion Bird the rebound. Fans starting to get into it a little bit. 
<laughs> and this time Ryan Rowland running up the sideline. Malik Garner looked at him and said, no, I'm not throwing that pass again. Here's Garner controlling the offense for the Dolphins. Transfer out of Saginaw Valley State. Here's Ryan Rowland has been silent. Down low to Tom Brown. Skip pass to Nwandu in the corner. Another skip pass out to Rowland. Rowland down low catches Nwandu on a bounce. Now Tom Brown, a three to beat the shot clock. It's an air ball. Their second shot clock violation. Great defense by Merrimack. Tom Brown is talking to uh, Jason Bradwell, the official, claiming he was fouled. And you don't see Tom Brown complain to officials much at all. Pat Beeline is also giving uh, words to him. But I think he hit him right here. You can hear Patrick Beeline pointing to his right elbow and saying he hit him right here. And that's why the air ball. But the officials are sticking with their story. Yeah, and it's tough to get that call when the shot clock's yeah, expired. And you're yeah. just kind of throwing it up to beat the shot clock. Here's Julia Lord back into the action, into the corner. Back up top to Watkins, and there's going to be an illegal screen called on Connolly, who just checked back into the action. All he had to do was stand completely still and let the play come to him, but he moved. Connolly with three fouls and hasn't been on the floor much today for Merrimack. Dolphins get it back down by five, trying to make this a one-possession game here. Moyne's going to live with a smaller lineup on the floor because they can't afford to take that second guard off the floor that can help to defend. Suncion Bird eight. powers his way in, misses the shot, but drew the contact, and will go to the line for two. From behind. If it, if it is, that's his third. Huh. It is. So he and Connolly have three fouls apiece with 11.38 to play. At the moment, both are staying on the floor. Yeah, not Although, for long. Not for long as we see Bolter and Crawford ready to check back in. Suncion Bird's first free throw is up and good. He's two for two from the line. Suncion Bird, seventh most accurate field goal shooter in the league. Transfer out of Gannon in his third year with the Dolphins. Second shot coming. It's up and good. 17 for Asuncion Bird to lead all scorers. It's taken a little while, but Lemoyne has been able to cut into this lead. Yep, they've scored seven straight to get back within a possession. It's 50-47 Merrimack. Bolter around to the right and Hayes. Hayes guarded by Garner. Hayes into the paint. One-handed pass out to the right side. Crawford a three. It's an air ball picked up, put back in by Hayes and a foul. Javaris Hayes, who's one of the best offensive rebounding guards you'll ever see. And he'll have a chance. Ahmad Harris of Bloomfield from a few years back was the best offensive rebounding little guard I've ever seen in my life. Javaris Hayes is not too far behind him. Well, that time Hayes got down low. On, it's easy for Garner to guard him out on the perimeter where speed and quickness is the story. Hayes but down low, Hayes is a pretty strong player, got good position and good energy to put that in. Three-point play converted. He's now got 15 to lead Merrimack. Here's Asuncio Bird trying to attack. He lays it up and in with the left hand. CJ Asuncio Bird with 19. Continuing to have the uh, game of his season as Lemoyne's back within four. They had one other game this year where he just was unstoppable offensively. Lemoyne certainly needs that today. Hayes left open. He had a lane and laid it up and in. Well, that time the screen was set and it picked off Malik Garner and no one was there to, be, to pick up Hayes. It looked like Tom Brown tried to stay with him, but that is a real mismatch. Merrimack by six, approaching the midway mark of the second half. 55-49 and now 17 for Hayes. Roland back out to Garner. Now Roland fires up a three, and that's good. Finally, the first points for Ryan Roland, who's the second most accurate three-point shooter in the conference. And he brings Lemoyne within a, a possession again, 55-52. Here's Hayes, hop along dribble on Tom Brown, lays it up, and he got the roll. And again, when the switch goes to a Dolphin forward, they just can't stay with Hayes. Merrimack has figured out what Lemoyne was doing with C.J. Asuncion Bird. Somehow they've got to get C.J. on the big man instead, so when there's a switch, C.J. can pick him up. We're just under 10 minutes now. Lemoyne down five. Javaris Hayes with the last three baskets and a free throw for, uh, for uh, Merrimack as Asuncion Bird has a tough angle and misses the shot inside. Now Merrimack in no rush here, looking to add to a five-point lead. Here's Javaris Hayes again, trying to take Tom Brown off the dribble. Passes out. Here's a deep three by Lord, in and out. Rebound comes back out to Lemoyne. 
Malik Garner. Over to Nwandu. Roland bounces into Kobe Nwandu. Stops on the baseline, looks for a cutter, finds Roland on the right wing. Shot clock's to seven. Roland lost the ball off his leg and out of bounds. Knocked off his leg by Javaris Hayes. Javaris Hayes. Might not count as a steal for him, but it certainly has the same effect. We have a media timeout with 9.09 to go in the second half. Lemoyne trying to fight that uphill battle as they continue to trail. 57-52, you're watching Lemoyne College Basketball on NE10 now. To be Jesuit is to be more, to go deeper. 28 schools, 56 teams, sharing a passion, formed by academic rigor, classic performances, legendary character, made complete through service to others, and a faith that does justice. Jesuit basketball, mission, mind, and body, on the court and off. For over 30 years, members of the Dolphin Athletic Association have supported Lemoyne student athletes and their achievements both on and off the court. Learn more about how you can support the Dolphins by logging on to LemoyneDolphins.com today. 12.26 to go in the second half. It's New Haven 56, Southern Connecticut 46. Want to make a correction, Javaris Hayes has 20 points, not 19, as I said before. That leads all scorers. He also has six assists, eight of 14 from the floor. Eight rebounds, four on the offensive end. Well, again, defensively, Lemoyne has to make sure when they switch, it's somebody like C.J. Sunshine Bird that picks up Javaris Hayes, not Tom Brown who can't stay with him. You know, Joey Gale is a smart coach. He saw what Lemoyne was doing. He's putting two big players in there, and Javaris Hayes is making sure the switch is to a forward who just can't stay with him to the basket. Lemoyne is shooting over 51% from the floor. Merrimack at exactly 50%. Merrimack's made twice as many threes, though. And here it is. Here's Hayes. Or, yeah, no look pass down low to Joyner, who's fouled on his scoop layup attempt. It's just great offense right now being run by Merrimack. There are two players setting picks or screens for him, for, um, for Javaris Hayes. And Javaris Hayes is picking the player that's being guarded by Tom Brown. So the switch is to the forward. He's not picking whoever C.J. Assumption Bird is guarding. Joyner, who's one of two at the line, will get a couple of free throw tosses here. First one is up and no good. One more could make it a six-point lead for Merrimack with 8.54 to go in the second period. The Plainfield, New Jersey native connects. He's got seven points. And the Dolphins trail by six. 58-52. Pressure in the backcourt again. Roland jumps it across to Garner. Garner, a pull-up jumper from the foul line. It's good. One, one way to uh, beat the defense is to try to get the shot out before the zone could set up, and that was basically a free throw for Malik Garner, and Javaris Hayes kind of slipped during that play, but it looks like he's okay. Garner with eight off the bench for the Dolphins, who trail by four with 8.39 to go, clock running. Javaris Hayes, who can lull you to sleep. It looks like he's nonchalant, doesn't care, but the guy's got a heart of a champion. Double screen set for him at the top of the key. He loses his footing, finds a man down low anyway. Joiner, and he lays it up in and over Nwanda. Again, he went to Tom Brown's side, but got, Tom got some help. And once he picked up the dribble, he had to find an open man. The problem was that open man was one-on-one -on -one down low. Both teams continue to shoot over 50%. Nine points now for Joiner. Bounce entry to Asuncion Bird. Takes the running bank shot. Good off the right glass. He's got a game-high 21. Approaching a career high, and the Dolphins... Now trail by four again, 60 to 56. Well, let's see how they set it up again here, Chris. Brian oh, Bolter's in there just as a decoy. Here's Javaris Hayes splitting defenders back out top of the key. Joiner, a three pointer off the rim, rebounded by Roland, and he'll dribble up. And Lemoyne will take that any day. Although he can't hit that shot. I think that's better than Javaris Hayes going to the basket. Though. I'll say. If you're a 
defending Merrimack. Here's Roland. Dolphins patient with the offense. Asuncion Bird throws a pass to Nwandu. He somehow corrals it, gets it blocked on the shot. Loose ball comes out to Tom Brown. And he'll hand to Asuncion Bird. Lemoyne will reset with a fresh shot clock. Not sure why that reset. Was there a change of possession? It hit the rim from underneath. Okay. But it still hit the rim. All right. Thought it was an air ball, but I wasn't sure. Asuncion Bird loses the ball, but a free chin foul going to be called on Merrimack on Javar Hayes, who doesn't like the call. I don't know about that either. He complains, but uh, it's going to be his second. Fifth on Merrimack with seven minutes frozen on the clock. It'll be an inbounds for LeMoyne. Shot clock now to 20, as is the new rule. After a foul, inbounds to Roland. Bounces to Malik Garner in the corner, back to Roland. And one can cut it to a two-point game or one if they can hit a long one here. Garner, back to Roland. Shot clock to single digits. Roland bounces into a Sunsion Bird. He goes up strong with the right-hander. Jump hook is good. A Sunsion Bird with 23. Three shy of a career high. And LeMoyne's within two for the first time in the second half. 6.34 to go. And here comes Bolter setting the screen. Here's Hayes working on a Sunsion Bird. And that's the, that's the switch LeMoyne wants. They want a Sunsion Bird to pick him up. And now Hayes gets it, throws it back out to Bolter. A tough corner, three is good! With a man in his face and a timeout call by Joey Gallo. Wow, you got to tip your cap to Ryan Bolter on that one. 17 on the corner triple by Bolter. Well, you kind of have to pick your poison. To shut down Javaris Hayes, LeMoyne ends up with a guard guarding Bolter. And so it's very difficult to take away a shot on the inside, or in that case, 6'7 guy shooting a three-pointer over a 5'11 guard for LeMoyne. Right, but he was still closing in and had his it hand was, in his face. Tough shot. Yeah, but, you know, Bolter can make those in his sleep. He's now got 93 three-pointers on the season, which is more than any other player in the Northeast 10 Conference. And that's the kind of shot he was making with no defense on him early in the game at Merrimack when LeMoyne lost him a few times, and he got into a big groove and had 24 points uh, to lead Merrimack's victory. Right now, Merrimack up by five on that big shot by Bolter with 6.17 to go in the second half. Fans don't miss a single minute of basketball action the rest of the year. Any 10 now takes you courtside for every basket, rebound, and assist across the conference through the playoffs. Each home game is broadcast live in high definition. We also have the audio call from every road game on the schedule. All games on any 10 now are free of charge and available at LemoyneDolphins.com. So let's look online right now. New Haven still holds the lead over Southern Connecticut. 58-51, 9.44 to go in that one. Well, Merrimack has nine three-pointers in the back tonight. In LeMoyne's last three games, they've given up 11 total to the last three teams they played, St. Rose, New Haven, and Pace. 63-58, Merrimack by five. And LeMoyne looking to cut closer yet again as they continue to try to scale this mountain okay. and punch a, their ticket to the championship game. I think the five players you see on the floor for LeMoyne right now are the ones that are going to play the rest of this game. They've been the most effective defensively if there's been any effectiveness against Javaris Hayes. And there's been no foul trouble for any of these LeMoyne players either. So, <laughs> Dolphins do not foul much. They're at the top of the league in that category as well. Nwandu over to Garner, and they come swarming out toward him. 11 on the shot clock. Roland now bounces it into Kobe Nwandu. Nwandu down low. He's called for steps. Took an extra step over there on the far side. Hard for us to see, but there was a, a certainly a confluence of players over on the baseline. So it'll be Merrimack ball on the Lemoyne turnover. Second travel called on Nwandu today. And here's Javaris Hayes working it up on Garner. There are the screens being set. And Javaris Hayes looks at, he's going to want to go right to get Tom Brown to guard him. Yeah, he, he goes, goes left. <laughs> what do we know? Here's Javaris Hayes. Oh, jumps in midair and just got the pass off into the corner to Crawford. Crawford backing in on Roland. Now he spins, forces up a shot. No good, but he drew the foul on Roland. That's Fans a don't call. like it. And, and Patrick Beeline is saying, what, what did he do wrong? And now he's getting... He's getting a, a, an explanation from Brian Dumont in front of us. Looked like good defense from here, but we weren't as close as the officials were. So it'll be free throws for Khalif Crawford is two of two from the line tonight. First shot is up and good. 
same travel down there. Patrick Beeline is not happy with the officiating tonight. He wasn't happy with the officiating, at least for part of the game at Merrimack. He got his only career tee in that game in six years of coaching. And he wanted a travel call on that before the foul. Interesting. Ten points for Crawford as he makes both free throws. Third player in double figures for Merrimack, which has expanded the lead to seven after scoring five straight. Roland bounces baseline. Gets it to Asuncion Bird. Double team. Forces one up anyway and scores again. Asuncion Bird with 25 off the bench. And Lemoyne trails by five again. Five minutes to go. Boy, Petra Beeline wants Malik Garner to pester Javaris Hayes. Not many people do that to him. But it doesn't seem to matter. They find a cutting joiner who's got the layup. Another assist for Hayes who might be close to a double digit number in that. And Patrick Beeline wants timeout. 11 points for Idris Joyner. He's the fourth warrior in double figures, and Lemoyne is down seven again, 67-60. And Don, they can't trade baskets here against uh, Merrimack. No, especially since they are having a hard time finding open threes. Javaris Hayes right now has nine assists, eight rebounds to go with all those points. So he's, he's working on a triple-double. Triple You've got to keep an eye out for that because there has not been a triple-double by any player in the region this year. Well, it's going to be hard to prevent him from getting one at this point. Fans, you can win with the Fins, courtesy of DeBella Subs, located on Bridge Street in East Syracuse. If the Dolphins win, you can receive a free side and beverage with a purchase of any sub or salad using the coupon posted to Twitter, Facebook, or the Lemoyne Dolphin Rewards app after the game. Be sure to follow the Dolphins on social media or download the Rewards app to win with the Fins and Debella Subs of East Syracuse. And it's even more than the numbers, Chris. When you watch him play, not only is he so physically talented, he's such a smart player. He sees the floor so well, and even on that play where I thought he would go right to pick up Tom Brown, he went left drew both guards and find a, found a cutting big man going to the basket. Yeah, he doesn't care. I mean, he likes the challenge. Wherever the, the shot or wherever the play might be, he's going to find it. If not, he'll create something. 20 points, 9 assists, 8 rebounds, and only 2 turnovers. Yep. And, and one of them he just kind of kept dribbling for whatever reason. And Wow. 4.39 to go. Dolphins still down by 7. 67-60 and need a scorer. And they need a bit of a run if Omer. they want to continue to defend their any 10 tournament championship title. Here's Roland. No one open inside. Good Merrimack defense. Roland again. It's Over been the, very good, Chris. Yep. Roland to the left side. Baseline jumper. Long. Rebound by Tom Brown. Back out to Garner. Steps into a three. In and out. That was a good chance for Lemoyne, but no such luck. Lord the rebound. Well, Merrimack going Division One next year, Chris. We know they're going to struggle, but I feel sorry for all the D1 teams who are going to have to face Javaris Hayes. Yeah, he's going to be a, a point of emphasis on a lot of scouting reports. 3.53 to go. Lemoyne needs stops. Here's Bolter with a deep three off the rim. He's not had the touch today. Ball goes out of bounds. They're going to say it's off of Ryan Rowland, but Pat Beeline is yelling it's because it was a foul first. Not sure about that, but There's some contact there, but not they, a lot. They do tend to let players battle for rebounds, and the ball was loose. Both players were going for it. Some officials would have called that a push from behind, but these officials have let both teams play. Passes into the backcourt and goes out of bounds, so Lemoyne will get a break and get it back anyway. Well, I mean, if, if Joyner could have caught up with it, they would have retained possession because they could throw the ball in the backcourt from there, but it's been a, this catch been, it. It's been a very good whistle for Merrimack. They have not been treated like the home team at all today. A lot of close calls gone their way. Not saying it's a home job or it, a job in any way, but oh, here's a steal by Javaris Hayes, and he's all alone in the front court, and that might be the well, beginning of the end for Lemoyne. Well, that was <laughs> Chris. That's Tim Level getting schooled. Yep, Hayes with 22. Lemoyne down nine with 3.23 to go. They've got to score in bunches here. Here's a floater by Level, no good. Lord pulls down the rebound. And the Dolphins now are just drawing blanks on the offensive end. Tim Level's a very good offensive player, but defensively he's still improving. And Javaris Hayes just showed him how much it takes 
to be able to guard one on one he against just, a great player. He just wills. He inflicts his will on you. Well, he's got Tom Brown set up there again. Let's see who this switches to Brown. Now he feeds Joyner back out left side. That deep three by Lord in and out, and the rebound wow. by Asuncion Bird. Lemoyne has a chance here for a late run. Merrimack with that vaunted zone defense. Here's a deep three by Level around the rim and out, tapped up by Asuncion Bird once, twice good. And CJ Asuncion Bird has a new career high of 27 points. He has been the one person keeping Lemoyne in on the fringes of this game. Can Level in the game to do what he just did, try to make a three-pointer, a traveling call. The double team sending Nwandu around the uh, side of Hayes forces the turnover. Lemoyne gets it back down seven with 2.21 to go, rolling back in for Level. Rolling back in for Lemoyne, replacing Level. You hope that Level could get hot and score in spurts like he has the ability to do, but Lemoyne, he's not going to make those shots. Needs the defense of Ryan Rowland instead. Rowland to Garner. Just too far away from the three-point line. They're not even getting the ball past the past the free throw line. Ryan Rowland into a Sunsion Bird. Double team, triple teamed, and fouled. Hayes coming around the blind side, trying to get the steal and reached in and got his arm instead. Third foul on Javaris Hayes. It's the sixth team foul on Merrimack, so Lemoyne will put it in play with 201 to go, down seven. And bounces to a Sunseon Bird down low position, got fouled again, and that's Lord's, Lord's fourth. Wow, not much there, but he did get him from behind. And Merrimack foul on number 15, and three oh, joiners. Oh, give it to Joyner. Wow. So a break I didn't for see Julian that at all. Bird going to the line where he's three out of three today. <laughs> he's trying to say me. It wasn't me. <laughs> that's all right. It's okay if it's you because you only have one. With 1 to 58 to go, it's better that the foul's on him. Sancio Bird misses his first free throw. Well, Sancio Bird, if he makes this free throw, which he does, he becomes the first Dolphin to hit 28 points in the game this year. Kobe Nwandu had a 27 point game earlier this year. So this is a season high for a Lemoyne player, but they've gotten very little else as the Dolphins pressure and Asuncio Bird knocks one into the fourth row of seats behind, behind us. Six point game with a minute 49 to go. Lemoyne needing stops here and some shots to have a chance. Javaris Hayes working on Ryan Rowland this time. It's actually not Hayes. Oh, that, that's right, Crawford. So what do you do now with Hayes off the ball? Here's Crawford going in hard and getting fouled by Rowland. Going up, they're going to say free throws. Well, he was going to the basket to shoot. So it sends Crawford back to the line. Rowland picks up his fourth. He's the first player in foul trouble for Lemoyne. Crawford at the line for Merrimack shooting two. Crawford 4-4 four four from the line tonight. Two-shot foul. Both teams will be in the bonus from here on out. First one short. Merrick Max been to the line a lot more than LeMoyne tonight. Or not a lot more, but hey, Kobe. they have gotten to the stripe more often than LeMoyne has. Well, they're spreading the floor when they go to the basket. LeMoyne's been a little bit late on some of these plays to come over and defend. Misses both. Still a two-possession game. That's rare for Crawford. 90 seconds to go. LeMoyne down six. See if they have some late life in them. Roland to Garner. Back to Roland. Throws to Asuncio Bird. Catches. Goes up strong. And good. 30 points for C.J. Asuncio Bird continuing to... Rewrite his career high, 69-65. Dolphins pressure in the backcourt, but Lord will get it up close. And we have a timeout called by Javaris Hayes. With a minute six to go, and Lemoyne creeping back to within four. They've scored five straight to trim the nine-point deficit to four. Follow the Dolphins 24-7 through all the social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Simply search Lemoyne Dolphins and you'll link up with the Finns with up-to-date video highlights, behind-the-scenes photos, and breaking news.
Winner of this game again will play the winner of the New Haven Southern Connecticut game. New Haven's been leading that one throughout the day. And uh, right now, if the scores hold, it's Merrimack at New Haven in Saturday's championship game. And regardless of whoever loses this game, they will be in the NCAA tournament a week from Saturday at a gym to be determined. Probably Manchester, New Hampshire, where St. A's is the number one seed, but Damon has a chance to win the ACC tournament and might make put some pressure on the committee to say, hey, we want it in Buffalo. 69-65 Merrimack with a minute six to play. Let's set it up for you. Possession arrow favors Lemoyne. Both teams are in the bonus from here on out. And each team has one timeout left. Bolter will throw in bounds. Oh, wow. How did CJ Sunshenberg get that high up off the ground? Well, he's got athleticism. Unfortunately, just a half second early. Well, Merrimack, even if they score here, as long as it's not a three, it would still be a two possession game. But precious seconds coming off the clock right now. Here's Javaris Hayes near half court. One putting a lot on getting a stop. A near steal. Now there is a, an offensive foul call on Javaris Hayes. After he lost the ball, he pushed off. Now he's got four, and Lemoyne's got life with 46.1 to go. He lost the ball. I think Garner got a piece of it. And right now, we... Riley McGraw, the official to our right, who's the alternate, has just asked Brian Zink, the official on the floor, is this a loose ball foul? Because if it is and not an offensive foul, it's free throws for Lemoyne. So it's a great call by the uh, it's a great call by the alternate official. Nope. They're gonna say charging foul. So here's Roland. Bounce entry to a Sun on Bird. He's got the running bank shot. It rolls off the rim. Kobe Nawandu has the rebound. Lost it out of bounds. They say off of Merrimack. And the Dolphins breathe a sigh of relief. It looked like Nawandu lost that off his fingers. Get up there. Get up, Dolphins don't need a three, obviously. They've got to score, though, as soon as possible. In bounces to a Sun on Bird, and he gets the quickie layup. It's a two point game. 7 0 run for Lemoyne. And 32 for Asuncion Bird. Pressure in the backcourt. Javaris Hayes working on Malik Garner. Garner fouls him. Hayes will go to the line for the one and one. Now remember, he's been struggling at the stripe. Missed his last three in the final seconds in the quarterfinal win against Adelphi. And he's two of three today. Nobody in the lane for Merrimack. First shot for the junior is up and good. And now it's a three-point game, 23 for Hayes. And he'll have a chance now to make this a two-possession game. Still time on the clock, 26.8 for Lemoyne to get two scores. Second shot up. No good long, time. Ryan rolling the rebound. Now the Dolphins go for three here, a quick two. They just have to score, they can't have an empty possession. Here's the Sun Sion Bird back out to Malik Garner. Garner, a three pointer to tie. Bullseye! 13 seconds to go. Merrimack has a chance for the win. Malik Garner, a well defended three. He's got 11. Nine seconds to go, and Merrimack wants to call timeout, I think. No. Here's Hayes working to his right, spinning offensive foul, and Javaris Hayes has fouled out of the game. No, no, no. It's not on Hayes. It's Who's not it on? on Hayes. It's on Joyner. It is. Yep. Well, Lemoyne will have the basketball with 2.5 seconds to go and a chance to win. A, a 10-1 run for Lemoyne has drawn Lemoyne even with Merrimack. Wow. What a turn of events here. 70 to 70. Now remember, Lemoyne has had only one lead in this game. 25-24. They have trailed for 39 minutes and change. Probably 39 minutes and 30 seconds, if not more. Well, there were some ties in there. So they have only had the lead for about 13 seconds today. And now the Dolphins will have a chance here with a quick shot to get the win. If not, we're going overtime. 
And Chris, looking at Javaris Hayes' numbers, they're still fantastic. What, does he have a triple-double? He does not. He still only has nine assists and eight rebounds, 23 points. He now has five, five, five turnovers to go with those nine assists. Well, he does lead the league in turnovers, but that's because he has the ball in his hands all the time. Right. And he drives to the basket a lot, right. and sometimes the ball gets tipped away. You do not want to take that away from his game, though. Right. You don't want to lose all the good that you get with him just by trying to slow him down. One's going to try to bow, lob the ball in to get a good look. Tom Brown at half court. Pump fakes once. Now gets it to a Sunsea on Bird. And here's a three-pointer for the win. Off the rim. We're going overtime. The Dolphins are one and one in overtime this year. And wow. Merrimack this year in overtime. Let's see. I know they lost at home to Jefferson in overtime, a game I saw early in the year. But these stats here do not put overtime, they don't put overtime down, so I'm going to have to ask our buddy Mike, the SID, for uh, Merrimack. In West Haven, Connecticut, New Haven leads Southern Connecticut 79-66, a minute 31 to go, they're up 13, looking to punch their ticket to the championship game. Southern Connecticut just not able to score as easily against that New Haven defense as they have in some of their recent games. So it looks like, Chris, uh, New Haven still a ways to go, but they're in the double bonus against Southern Connecticut. They're up 13 with a minute 31 to go, trying to get to that championship game a little harder for either of these teams as we go overtime. Well, AIC was the one team that uh, Merrimack played in overtime. It was like also a game I happened to see at, at Platova Gymnasium in Springfield, and they won that game. The game against Jefferson did not go overtime. Jefferson played overtime in the previous game in that tournament. So Merrimack 1-0 in overtime this year. Lemoyne 1-1 as they defeated... Um, Pitt Johnstown in triple overtime at the IUP tournament in November. Dolphins win the tap this time, and again, they still move from left to right on your screen. And Lemoyne lost. Well, the only game Lemoyne has lost in the last 11 was at home to Southern Connecticut in overtime, 97 91, a couple of weeks ago. Bounce entry to Kobe Nwandu. Back out to Roland. Roland back out to Nwandu. Step back three. Travels for the third time. Missed the shot anyway. So it'll go over to the Merrimack Warriors. The Dolphins historically, and again, this has nothing to do with anybody on the floor right now, but historically, one of the weirdest stats is Lemoyne in their history is 40 and 68 in overtime. 40 and 68. Hard to believe. And I know a lot of those games, the head coach was John Beeline, who's in the stands. Julia Lord has it. Left wing. Joiner sets a pick for him. Here's Bolter. Tough three off the dribble. No good. Rebound by Roland. And the Dolphins have it. Tie game at 70 in overtime. I think I'd still rather have Bolter shooting the that three coming around the curl off the dribble than having him set in the corner. Here's a Sunsea on Bird down low. Flips it up off the rim and in. And Lemoyne has its largest lead of the game by two. Only their second lead of the game. 34 for a Sunsea on Bird. Career high was 26 coming in, and now Malik Garner fouls Javaris Hayes, and he'll go to the line. At that time, maybe a little bit of a re relaxing by Malik Garner was too close to Hayes, and Hayes just took that, that first quick step. It's the one and one for Hayes. And it's only the second foul, I think, on Garner. Playing a season's worth of minutes tonight. Shot is up. Good. Boy, he got every part of the rim. And he seems to get the bounce on a lot of shots. Yes, he does. Just nice, soft shot. 24 points now for Hayes to lead the Warriors. One more coming up can tie the game. It is up, and it is good. Two up two for Hayes. 25 for Hayes. 72 all. If you're Lemoyne, you do what's been working. Get the ball to C.J. Sunshine Bird. Yeah. He's got 34. They're 72 points. He's so athletic, there's not a lot of size down low for Merrimack. He's got it now. On Andres Joyner. Finds some space, flips it up. No good this time. Bolt to the rebound. I'm running out of room for all the shot attempts for Sunsea Bird on my scorecard. Be a little, getting a little bit tired. That shot didn't look as crisp. Crawford out to Lord. Lord back to Joyner. 
Jordan passes down low to Bolter. Position good and a foul. And he pumps a fist in midair. Sunsey and Bird was a little late getting there and fouled the senior. Now the last time these two teams played each other in overtime, well, Lemoyne lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament here on its home floor two years ago to Merrimack. They used it as uh, momentum and uh, motivation for the following year when they made it to the Elite Eight. Shot is good for Bolter. He's now got 20. The Dolphins trail 75-72. They've given up five straight. 3-10 to go in overtime. Here's Tom Brown forcing his way in, bouncing it off the rim and in, all right, off the glass and in. Tom Brown now with 10, and he has the fourth Dolphin in doubles. 75-74 Merrimack, 2.54 to go in overtime, period one. Hayes working on Garner, right side. Pass up top to Bolter, fall away three around the rim, no good, Tom Brown the rebound. John Beeline flew in to see this game. He's seeing a good one. Well, fly, fly home a few minutes later. <laughs> yes. I'm sure he'll take his family to dinner before he departs. Big game against Michigan State on Sunday. Top of the key, Garner pump fakes on a three. Now Ryan Rowland drives. Baseline shot rejected, but he gets it back. Bounces. No, he looks down low. He looks like he was tripped up. I think it's called a jump ball. And that will be Merrimack possession. So a turnover for Lemoyne. Tough break for Rowland. With 2.18 to go in overtime. Lemoyne down one. I think it was Joyner with the block shot, but I wasn't positive. I think so, too. It looked okay. like it. If so, team best 48th rejection of the year. Crawford speed dribbles and gets back behind the arc. Javars Hayes catches. Now down low. He scoops it to Joyner, who misses the layup. Rebound, though, by Hayes. Puts it up and in. He's got great leaping ability, just flat off the ground, and he outleaped the other guards to come away with that rebound. 27 for Hayes, and LeMoyne's down three, 77-74. Well, the winner of this game, Chris, is going to face the face New Haven. They beat Southern Connecticut 87-66. Ending Southern Connecticut season, and New Haven goes 3-0 against its crosstown rivals this year. Bounce to Malik, or to uh, Sunsey on Bird. And the Dolphins turn it over again as Kobe Nwandu just tripped, lost the ball, and Lemoyne couldn't save it. Wet spot on the floor, bad break for Lemoyne, a minute 25 to go, and they need a stop now, trailing by three. Two turnovers uncharacteristically for Lemoyne here in the final seconds. Inbounds is to Lord. Lord double teamed on the baseline. Trouble getting it. And he lost it out of bounds, I believe. Now they're going to say it's off Lemoyne. Yep, he knocked it off. I think he knocked it off of Kobe's knee. So Bolter will trigger inbounds with 24 on the shot clock, minute 19 on the game clock. And we have officials' time here. What's the story? I think the, um, yeah, Joey Gallo was. Timeout, and then he decided to pull the trigger and use his last remaining timeout. Well, he had two. Oh, he has two, right. That's, so that's one. They added one for overtime, right. but he had one left. And right. I think he was just wanted to be absolutely sure he wasn't using his last timeout. So a minute 19 to go in overtime period one. Lemoyne down 77-74. Again, the winner will move on to play New Haven in the championship game on Saturday. If Merrimack wins, the game will be in New Haven. If Lemoyne comes back again and wins, then they'll host it here on Saturday. The loser will also, almost definitely, I mean, we, we can say with almost assured, assuredly, assuredly well, that they will be in the NCAA tournament a week from Saturday. Well, with Southern Connecticut losing, they really can't get in, so that's yeah. one of the spots that would have been taken. Yeah. Although they had to win the whole tournament, but yes, you're right. Now they can't do right, that. Right, if they had They won. can't steal a bid. Right. 24 on the shot clock again, and Merrimack will put it in play. Jamaris Hayes will trigger in. Win or lose, Merrimack, too good of a year. They should be in. And oh, Lemoyne, they will be. A very good year, winning their half of the conference. It'd be very tough to keep them out, too. Jaleel Lord into the corner. Bolter, wide open three, missed it. Rebound on the floor, comes to Joyner, and the Dolphins didn't do a good job rebounding there. And now Merrimack gets a fresh shot clock up three. The worst rebounding team in the region gets a big O board. I tell you, as great as Javaris Hayes has been today, Idris Joyner has made some great plays at the right time. 
Here's Crawford with a running bank shot. That's good. That's a five-point game. Crawford. Crawford now with 12, and the Dolphins trail 79-74, and they need a score big time. Here's Roland. Back out to Malik Garner. And Ryan Roland lost the ball. A third turnover in overtime for LeMoyne. He looked before he caught it. Bolter dribbling. They got, a, they got a foul. Yeah, they got a foul with 25.9 to go. And the Dolphins just not playing strongly with the basketball in the uh, overtime period. Asuncion Bird picks up his fourth foul. And now it's the double bonus for the Warriors as Bolter goes to the stripe. Four of four today from the line. Well, both teams have not gone deep into their bench as he makes the first one, especially here in overtime. These are the players LeMoyne has had to leave on the floor. They look a little tired and they're a little bit off offensively, but they put in their sharpshooter, Chris, see if he can hit some shots here to keep LeMoyne in it. That's Tim Level. Both shots good, 22 for Bolter. And now the Dolphins trail by seven, three possession game. Garner, top of the key, straight on three, good. Wow. Garner now with 14, Dolphins down four, and they call a timeout with 20.1 to go. But short of a steal here or a foul and a missed two free throws, looks like a very tall task for the Dolphins. Uncharacteristic turnovers in overtime, Don, for the least turnover-prone team in the league as might cement their doom. Again, they look a little bit tired. They're not concentrating quite as much. The, that last turnover, Ryan Rowland turned his head to make his move before he caught the ball. It rolled right over his shoulder, right... Um, but they did what they had to in that possession. They have to hit threes. They can't hit twos because they can't assume that Merrimack's going to miss too many free throws. So, right. well, can't get the steal. Like you said, they have to foul. Whether they hit one or two, I think they've got to come. They probably have time to get down the court three times for legitimate shots. So, if you're going to make three shots and you assume Merrimack's going to make some free throws, you're going to have to make some threes. Ryan Rowland has had a subpar game for his lofty standards. Came in as the number two three-point shooter in the league and has just one three in the bank today. I think he's only taken five shots and a couple from two, but has not been a factor offensively for LeMoyne. Well, Tim Level's in the game for one very important reason. I mean, he's got to play defense, but he doesn't have a lot of fouls, so he can foul yeah, that's, and he can shoot. LeMoyne's not going to be playing defense here. They're going to be fouling if they can't get steals because there's not enough time. Right. Right, you can't even try to get a 10-second call because right. half, the, half the clock will run out. Javaris Hayes surveying uh, his offensive teammates. Inbounds just to Bolter. They don't want to foul him, but they're going to have to. Now Javaris Hayes will dribble up court. They got a foul, and they do foul. Tom Brown gives it with 13.2 to play. Even if he hits both of these, it's still a two-possession game. But clock now becoming a major factor. 13.2 to play. Javaris Hayes back to the line. Two, two shots for Hayes. He's five of seven from the line tonight. First shot up. No good. He's going to be a little tired himself. Yeah. Again, coming off the 46 point performance, he won Player of the Week for Division II college basketball last week. Second shot is good. 28 for Javaris Hayes. LeMoyne needs a three. Here's Malik Garner to the corner. Tipped out of bounds by Bolter with 8.6 to play. So Javaris Hayes, Chris, if nothing changes, will finish the game with 28 points, 9 assists, and 9 rebounds. Hmm. Achingly short of a triple-double, but he'll take the win for his team no matter what. Here's Garner. they got to get it up. Deep three. Short. Rebound in the hands of Joyner, and he's fouled with 3.2 to go, and that should do it. Well, a valiant effort for LeMoyne to fight back from nine down with two minutes to go to force overtime. They actually had a shot to win it, but C.J. Asuncion Bird's tough uh, jumper from the right arc was long, and we went overtime. Dolphin scored to go ahead in overtime, but it's been all Merrimack ever since. Idris joined it to the line where he's two out of four. First one is up and good. This next one will make it a three possession game if he can convert. But again, there's not enough time for Lemoyne with 3.2 to play. As some of the fans start to 
get ready to depart. Second shot for Joyner. It is up and it's good. 13 for the five man. And Lemoyne's still going to play for something. The pass is caught, intercepted by Lord, and that'll do it. Dolphins fall in overtime yet again, 84-77, losing to Merrimack for the second time in three years here in Syracuse in the, the postseason. And the game they lost two years ago, wasn't that in overtime? The offensive foul against Dan Kegler happened at the end of overtime? It was in overtime. The yeah, in the NCAA tournament. All these overtime losses at home, that's the way you beat Lemoyne. Well, you got to take him to overtime. Right. Lemoyne last year had only two league losses all year. They were both at home and both in overtime. Um, and this year, Southern Connecticut, yeah. Merrimack, both overtime. Right. It's it's crazy. But uh, for the for, for uh, this year, there will be a new NE10 tournament champion as uh, the Dolphins, the defending regional champs, lose today by the score of uh, 84 to 77. And Merrimack will go down to New Haven for the championship game on Saturday. And they'll uh, they'll play on the road. That's fine. That's the type of guy. <laughs> So uh, Merrimack wins it, and they'll play for their first championship in the NE10 tournament since 2000 when they defeated American International and Malik Moore, their great guard, uh, in the Volpe Center. But they will be on the road and have to do it at New Haven, which uh, has a chance to, uh, make, to win its first NE10 tournament since joining the league. They did lose a championship game to Southern Connecticut once, their crosstown rival, who they beat tonight. But uh, they'll have a chance for their first uh, NE10 title, and Merrimack a chance for its first since 2000 when they meet on Saturday. And Lemoyne now will just wait for selection uh, Sunday next week to find out who they are playing in the NCAA tournament. Lemoyne number three in the region coming into today's game and losing to a very good regional opponent. So uh, they will be in the NCAA tournament, and we'll just see where and when and against whom that game will be as uh, the Dolphins lose in their... Uh, quest to repeat as any 10 tournament champions but their season continues and uh, they'll be playing NCAA tournament ball once again so we need to stay tuned for that and as you mentioned uh, could be Merrimack again Merrimack will be playing New Haven and uh, looking at the numbers very balanced scoring for New Haven five players in double double figures Felizor had 18 Roland 13 Roy Kane had 21 Bailey 11 Lane with 18, not much from the bench, but those those five guys did a number on Southern Connecticut. And defensively, what a job. Kelsey Felizor, Chris, two for six from the floor, but 14 for 15 from the line. So, you know, he was going wow, in. a lot of attempts for him. For Southern Connecticut in their last uh, game of the season, they were led by oh, C.J. Seaford had 26 points on 10 of 16 shooting, 6 of 12 from three. Ives with 12, Joey Wallace finished with 10 points and 10 rebounds, a double-double for Joey Wallace, who really has picked up the rebounding here in the second half of the season. But not enough for Southern Connecticut as they fall to New Haven 87-66. Well, the stat that really stands out for me looking at this sheet is free throw shooting. Merrimack 21 of 29, Lemoyne 9 of 11, almost a 3 to 1 ratio in free throw makes and attempts, rather three free throw attempts. Lemoyne only committed 15,000 in this game and there were 29 free throws, so almost every time Lemoyne fouled practically, it resulted in free throws. There were almost no off the ball fouls. Because it was against uh, Merrimack going to the basket yeah. and then of course late in the game they had to foul to extend the game. Um, Le Lemoyne, and, and yeah. So a handful of those fouls came there. Lemoyne shot a shade better from the floor, 51% to 50%. 6 of 18 from 3 to Merrimack's 9 of 22. That's another reason why they played so well, or shot so well and won um, Merrimack is they uh, they hit some more threes and they made 12 more free throws. Lemoyne out-rebounded Merrimack 32 to 28. Um, they turned it over 18 times. I'm going to look and see if that's a season high. I think it is. Uh, even though they played five extra minutes. 18 turnovers for Lemoyne and many unforced, including three big ones in the overtime period. Uh, that's, you're not going to get it done when you play really good teams and you turn it over 18 times. Looking for points off turnovers, Chris. I don't see that on this weird box score. 
It's there. Where is it? Yeah, it's, again, you have to search. Where? Exactly my point. Turnovers. That's turnovers. Yes. Oh, point, points, points from off turnovers. I gotcha. Yes. Well, that number wasn't quite as bad, 16 to 10 Merrimack, but when you're playing a close game that goes overtime, just one of those turnovers can make a difference. This was not a season high in turnovers. LeMoyne committed one more at Merrimack. So their <laughs> two worst games of the year as far as turning the ball over were against this Merrimack team. Again, points off turnovers is a big number. It wasn't a big difference in this game, but when you go overtime, just one of those turnovers could be the difference in the game, the difference in you winning or losing. So um, 18 turnovers also means you don't get as many looks at the basket. And despite the fact that LeMoyne had 61 shots to Merrimack's 54, think of how many more they could have had if they weren't turning the ball over. Or free throws. Merrimack had a lot yeah. of extra possessions because LeMoyne turned it over five more times. Uh, Merrimack had nine of the 12 steals and two of the three blocked shots. As uh, the Dolphins fall in overtime, 84-77 in the semis of the NE10 tournament. And Merrimack will now go to play New Haven for the championship and the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. But all three, all three teams, Merrimack, LeMoyne, which lost today, and New Haven, will all be in the NCAA tournament next week. Um, so CJ Asuncion Bird was the best player on the floor for LeMoyne, 34 points, a game high, a season high for a LeMoyne player. And i got to look back and find the last time a LeMoyne player scored as many as 34 because yeah. I can't remember off the, the top of my head. 30? Uh, very rarely, especially in Pat Beeline's system, it doesn't happen much. C.J. Sunsey Bird, 15 of 21 from the floor, missed his only three-point attempt and was 4 of 5 from the line. He did have six rebounds, two assists, just one turnover in 36 minutes. Would love to know the last time, here we go, the last time LeMoyne had a 30-point score was Nate Champion in that game at St. Rose, another overtime loss for LeMoyne, on November 23, 2013. That was the last time. So it's been six years since LeMoyne had a player score as many as 34 with C.J. Asuncio Burton. He did it off the bench, no less. That's the next question. When's the last time a LeMoyne reserve scored as many as 34 points? That might be an all-time record. Wow. Uh, also in double figures for LeMoyne, Malik Garner, who continues to play well off the bench. 14 points for him. Kobe Nwanda with 13 points and 8 rebounds. Tom Brown with 10 points, 7 boards, 4 assists. Uh, and after that, very little. 3 points each for Nez Gurkhan and Ryan Rowland. Rowland just 1 of 6 from the floor. My, he led the team in rebounding, though, with 8. And LeMoyne needs that from their guards, especially in a game like this where they're not playing a lot of forwards. And they couldn't. They couldn't do that because they had to be able to switch off and guard Javaris Hayes. Very difficult to do with big men. And for Roland, that's a career high in rebounds. Six was his previous mark set against two different teams. Javaris Hayes led Merrimack with 28 points, nine rebounds, nine assists, as you said, Don. Ten of 16 from the floor, two of two from three-point range. Ryan Bolter with 22 points. Khalif Crawford with 12, Idris Joyner with 13 points. And uh, off the bench, Mikey Watkins with six. Jaleel Lord had three. Uh, as LeMoyne's reserves outscored the Merrimack bench 48-6, to increasing LeMoyne's crazy advantage in reserve play all year. They've outscored their opponents by almost 10 a game off the bench. Fast break points favored Merrimack 13-2. to Second chance points, one more for the Warriors, 9-8. LeMoyne was better in the paint, 44-34, thanks to Asuncio Bird. And points off turnovers, as you said, Don, 16-10 to in favor of Merrimack. And that is the most points by a LeMoyne player at Ted Grant Court since Lortzik Paragon nine years ago at 36 against the Delphi, February 6, 2010. Thanks to Craig Lane for the, that information. Now, Don, I think it's got to be Javaris Hayes with his near triple-double oh, yeah. as our Nike BSN Sports star of the game. Even though he made some mistakes down the stretch, missed free throw, turnover, offensive foul, he did um, really get, Lemoyne, or get Merrimack to the point where they, uh, they needed to be in order well, to pull off this road well, win in the league. And he forced LeMoyne to play a certain way. His defense yeah. is outstanding as well. Um, he just he changes the nature of the game. And again, next year, there's some D1 teams going, oh, Merrimack, they just came from D2. How good are they? Yeah. They're going to have their eyes opened up by Javaris Hayes. Not only that, I mean, a very well-coached team yeah. that plays zone. A lot of teams don't play zone. You know, Merrimack's going to have some fun in their first couple of years at Division One. Uh, hopefully well, they're surprising still, some They some still want to have fun here at Division Two. Let's not sell well, them short have, here. They're going to be in the end. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yes, they will have fun at Division One, but now they uh, will focus on the league tournament title on Saturday at New Haven and then a shot at the NCAA tournament regional championship next week. 
So our Nike BSN Sports star of the game is Javaris Hayes with the 28 points, 9 assists, and 9 rebounds. As we welcome you to the Pepsi Post Game Show, Patrick Beeline will be with us momentarily. And uh, Don, again, uh, John Beeline comes in and sees his son uh, coach. And unfortunately for him, he did not see a win tonight. No, but I mean, he saw a very well-fought game, a good game against a good team. We expected this to be close. We expected the other semifinal game to be a little bit closer than it was, but it was until the end. But uh, Southern Connecticut was fighting from behind the entire game and just didn't have it as uh, New Haven pulled away at the end. A big rivalry game there. Again, I expect to be a little closer. Um, and third time was not the charm for no. Southern Connecticut. They lost all three to New Haven, their cross-down run. No one, unfortunately for them, they needed that win yep. more than New Haven did. So their season ends at 19-12. and 12. New Haven continues, and they'll play Merrimack for the championship on Saturday. Lemoyne will uh, be the runner-up in this game, and uh, they will await their opponent and location for the NCAA tournament. Championship game will be at New Haven on Saturday. Are you interested in any other scores? Uh, yes, but first let's talk with Patrick, oh, Patrick Beeline, who is here to give us his thoughts. A um, couple of things, Coach. First of all, um, uh, your team had an amazing comeback. You were down nine with just over two minutes to go, 2.03 to go, if I remember correctly, and you outscored Merrimack 10-1. Malik Garner with the three-pointer to cap the rally to force overtime. Even had a shot to win that was a, a tough defended shot. Uh, but then in overtime, uncharacteristic turnovers by your team, and it led to uh, Merrimack getting in a little bit of a comfort zone. They wound up pulling away. Yeah, uh, you know, first off, it was a, what a great game, you know, and uh, – you know, the start of the first half, we got down, you know, mental mistakes defensively. And then the start of the second half, we got down. So we're, we were playing catch-up the whole time. And, uh, you know, when we, we didn't play our best game, some guys did, some guys didn't. Uh, so the way our guys battled, you know, if you have 18 turnovers and at their place we had 19 turnovers, uh, they maybe forced five of them. We forced the other uh, 13. So uh, that's part of the game. It will learn from it. And, uh, you know, I told our guys out there, you guys did your work in the regular season. And, you know, we are, you know, hopefully going to the NCAA tournament. And, you know, if we play Merrimack again, I'll, ta I'll trade this loss for a win in the NCAA tournament. <laughs> That's true. Any day. And uh, now it's a li lifetime between the two schools is dead even, right? Dead even. 2020 all time between those two schools. And maybe another uh, game still to be played uh, next weekend. But, uh Looking back now at so far the regular season and everything leading up to the NCAA tournament, which is guaranteed for Lemoyne, they were number three in the region today. And uh, with Southern Connecticut losing, there's not there's nobody out there that can knock off five teams. So you're going to be playing in, um, in the NCAA tournament uh, a week from Saturday against a team to be determined and against uh, or at a gym to be determined. But your thoughts on uh, what so far has happened in the arc of the season for Lemoyne? You've had injuries. You had an eight and seven start, a ten and two finish. Your thoughts on you know how your team has come together this year uh unbelievable regular season uh i tell you what those guys have uh we've kind of as coaches have seen everything from the injuries to uh having a player join us mid-year uh so uh it's been a learning experience from the coaches all the way down to the new guys and i couldn't be uh more excited to go into the nc tournament with this group because i i believe we're playing right uh great basketball at the right time uh, and although, you know, you lose like this, sometimes if you remember the Southern Connecticut loss, that one hurt. Uh, but you l usually grow from losses, and uh, that's what we'll do from this one. Uh, but overall, the regular season, to finish 18-9, and nine, I believe, uh, where we lost eight seniors, uh, a credit to them for really buying into our culture and what we do. Not only losing the eight seniors, but it, throughout the season, you had the equivalent of a starting five on the disabled list. So you had players uh, probably put in positions where they weren't used to, but now you've got most of the team back. Um, other than maybe a little black eye uh, for Tom Brown, he looks pretty healthy. Team looks ready to go. You get a chance to take a few days off. What will you do as you prepare for next weekend? Yeah, well, we'll kind of go over that here now. We were preparing for, uh, you know, to play on Saturday, obviously. So I'll look at the schedule, uh, but definitely rest. We won't take too much. We'll stay in a rhythm, uh, but we won't grind them because we understand we got to win, you know, three games in four days, I believe. Uh, and so we'll uh, kind of... Uh, just take it easy, and then once our opponent comes out on Sunday, we'll hone in on that first-round opponent. Uh -huh. you, men you mentioned resting players, and for most of this game, you had to have a short bench, and it was pretty obvious that 
Javaris Hayes knew what way to go off the screen to make sure a forward picked him up who couldn't stay with him to get to the basket. And that kept you keeping some smaller players in the game as well that could stay in front of him. Uh, but what a smart player. I mean, we, we can't leave without mentioning how much he changes the game just with his presence on the floor, even to the point where you have to change your defensive strategy and even your personnel to just stay with him. Well, he's an abs uh, phen uh, phenomenal player. Uh, his ability to pass is, you know, he made those two threes where he hasn't done that in a long time consistently. So um, I think he likes this, Jim. If you remember, we've hosted it, so he's been here a lot. Uh, so that might have helped him. But he's hard to keep out of the paint. Uh, he's a big guard. Uh, even our guards had trouble in staying in front of him. I thought Malik did a good job there towards the end. Uh, but his passing ability to snap it with his right hand or snap it back with his left, unbelievable. Uh, so uh, credit to him of Joey putting him in position to score uh, the way he does. Um, again, you know, it was a great game, and, you know, they came out on top. They were just better today. Like like to bring up here uh, C.J. Asuncio and Bird, 15 of 21 shooting today, 34 points, career high, season high for any LeMoyne player, most by a LeMoyne player in, was it six years since Nate Champion got 35 in a game, at, um, and uh, most on this floor by a Dolphin since 2010, Lawrence Kerrigan's 36-point game. Uh, so he was your answer down low, and he was finding crafty ways to score against their uh, their bigs. Yeah, unbelievable performance by him. You know, we kept him in that middle, that short zone, and, uh, you know, his, his touch is unbelievable. And he found ways to score. Uh, kind of, you know, shut out. You didn't get to, uh, Kobe and Tommy a bunch of looks, uh, but he was doing such a great job in there. And he kind of worn down. He got worn down there a little bit, maybe in the second half. Uh, but at this point in the season, you go with those guys that are working for you. Uh, so he'll definitely get some rest, and he'll be back. And Malik Garner also did a great job of Javaris Hayes, limiting to him to as much as he could, stayed in front of him, and also gave you some big shots. He's coming on a little bit lately, too. He's starting to get healthy. Uh, your thoughts about him having an extra guard off the bench that can uh, do some things for you? Yeah, really good, especially when he makes shots. A uh, very talented player. Uh, and, you know, when he can stretch the defense by making shots, he, he has a great uh, passing ability. And he guards the ball extremely well. So uh, with him coming back healthy from a hamstring injury is definitely a positive uh, going into the NCAA tournament. All right, Coach. Well, uh, prepare well. And uh, I know your father was here and didn't get a chance to see a win, but it's great that you got a chance to see yeah, him. Yeah, I'm Thanks. glad he came in. So yes. thank you. Awesome to see him. Okay, thank see you, Coach. You That's uh, Patrick Beeline, who will next be taking to the court uh, on the sidelines. Most likely at Manchester, New Hampshire, at St. Anselm, but probably, I mean, if not, it'll be at uh, Damon. You Two places know. where LeMoyne has played this year, um, either in a preseason game or a regular season game. So it won't be fo a foreign land. And LeMoyne will uh, be prepared, you know that, for their next opponent, whoever that may be. Speaking of next opponents, let's talk about the women's team that will play tomorrow. As we see Michaela Roberts taking yeah, jumpers. And she's making threes and, like, save some for the game. Yeah. But, uh, wow, but, yeah, they will... Uh, They'll take to the court here tomorrow at 7 o'clock for their semifinal game, hoping, you know, the, um, what was it? Corinne Patavian told us um, at, at the uh, half of the men's game that we did uh, on Sunday that they looked, that she looked down the list, the team looked down the list of all the um, NE10 champions, and LeMoyne was not listed there. And that really stuck with her and with the team, and they really want to have some hardware. They know they're in the NCAA tournament as well. They know they won't be hosting regardless. And the truth is, if you're not hosting, you just want to get in. Yeah, Especially, and they've only been to one NE10 championship game. Wow, that's right. Only one. Yeah, and, so... Uh, yeah. So this is, it'll be almost history if they can win, and history if they can win two more. Um, and if this will be the first time ever that both the Dolphins men's and women's basketball teams will be in the NCAA tournament. Together, How about that? yeah. And uh, the women will be in action here tomorrow in the semifinals against New Haven. So we want to encourage all fans to come out here and support the Dolphin women's team. And uh, they will tip off at 7 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, please come on out and cheer on the Finns as they uh, work for their first NE10 tournament title. Dolphins basketball is a presentation of LeMoyne College. Special thanks to Matt Bassett, Craig Lane, Kendra Sheehan, Patrick Beeline, Brett Irvin, Dan Kegler, Gina Castelli, and all the folks from Merrimack College who helped us out with stats. For my partner, Don Famolo, this is Chris Cronosio reminding you again the final score. It was in overtime, the Merrimack Warriors 84, the LeMoyne Dolphins 77, and we say good night from the Heights.